Today's episode of the Nate Land Podcast is brought to you by Electric E-Bikes, Helix Sleep, and AG1. Hello, folks, and hey there. I am Abigail Bargatze. I'm Nate's sister. I'm here with Brian Bates, Aaron Weber, and Dusty Slay. All right. All right. <laughs> We're doing a, stuff a little bit different today. All right. All right. So y'all have no idea, oh, yeah. which is exciting. Uh, Nate's not going to be here for, uh, he's supposed to be here next week. He's not going to be here now. Oh, okay. So there's a. Uh, he quit. He quit. Um, he wants me to take over. Uh, no. Well, I'm so excited. We can't wait. <laughs> so what do y'all think it would be? Like if you had to guess why Nate would not be here next week. Having another kid. <laughs> <laughs> Laura's hit it that well. Yeah, yeah. She's like, due next geez. week. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let me think. Let me think. He could be something good or something bad. He could... I think he's. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say he's either got canceled for something. Okay. Uh, this will be a weird way to address that. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I think yeah. it's got to be Jerry Seinfeld related, right? Wasn't he just, people were talking about, he was hanging Seinfeld. out with Jerry Seinfeld. Could yeah. Be. And they were having lunch or whatever. People were talking about it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. now he's suddenly too good for us. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, uh, listen, guys, I'm moving on. You can keep the house. <laughs> I'm trying to think what's happening next week. So it's, um, hmm, it's October 23rd would be day recording. Yep. Uh, is there a award I'll show? Give you that a he's... Hint. So he'll be gone all week. Be gone all week. Okay. Um, he's having plastic surgery of some sort. Yeah. yeah. Pictorial implants. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's exactly what it is. All right, y'all ready for it? Yeah. yeah. Nate is hosting SNL. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Oh, amazing. <laughs> that, that is crazy. Amazing. It crazy. Is crazy. When is it happening? Uh, so the announcement's getting announced tomorrow. Of course, this will air Wednesday. Yeah. So the announcement will already be out. But Nate wanted me to tell y'all, like on air, Whoa. just to get your that very excited. Yeah, it's crazy. It's very out. exciting. Yeah, 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 I would have never guessed that. Yeah, That's yeah, awesome. we wouldn't have. We were like, what? <laughs> so he does have to cancel some shows. That part he's pretty sick about. Right. Yeah. But I didn't know how SNL even worked. Like, I mean, I watch it. I see the clips and stuff like that. Yeah. But like, you have to be there the whole week. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know. Like I was I guess like, you got to rehearse look, some sketches. Well, he's yeah. well. It's different for when you're a comic, so you're gonna write the sketches, and because I was like, Kim Kardashian didn't write those sketches. Sure. <laughs> like, right. There's sure. no way that she did that. But yeah, so he'll be there all week. So I think the show just for the Kardashian fans that may be out there, you said that, not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a hater. I mean, <laughs> um, so, but they're gonna reschedule all the shows. Nate's pretty sick about that part of just having to cancel yeah. shows but we think mm -hmm. like obviously he has great fans they're gonna get rescheduled um wait with, i'm on a show with him next week <laughs> are you really in st no, louis so it's, it is it's <laughs> oh, uh <laughs> come on he's like let brian know on air okay <laughs> i don't want him to make a scene Laura. it is it, it's uh <laughs> autumn wall iowa davenport iowa there's i think three st louis shows Whoa. i know and then indianapolis oh, they're gonna have i, I heard that's why he was offered snl because they knew you were you and him were doing shows together yeah yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. No, i was just that. on the tuesday night show but good for nate <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's pretty exciting yeah so that was kind of it that's why it's very that on is today. crazy Man, yeah that's gonna be crazy it's gonna be crazy when he called we were just like you're going to be on it? Do you know who the musical <laughs> guest is with him? Yeah. I honestly don't. I was what? told to. Aaron's just going to tune in for the band. Wow. Well, the very end. Well, I'm curious who he's going to be hanging out with. Yeah. yeah. So that'll be this coming Saturday? No. So he'll go from like October 23rd and then 28th is Saturday Night Live. Okay. October yeah. 28th. All right. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I think I'm Saturday. off that weekend. I'll be a I guess while. I am now. 
I'll be able to walk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I was just with them that Tuesday, but that's so awesome. Yeah, I think they meet on Monday morning, right? And do kind of like a pitch meeting and yeah, you get to meet the it's host wild. and all that. We got the schedule and it's like, yeah. it's meetings, I mean, from 12 to like, I mean, one or two in the morning every yeah. night. Yeah, so that's it's great. It's crazy. Yeah. Man. It's going to be super exciting. We're excited. It's crazy. We can't believe it. When he told us, we were like, oh, you're just going to be on it? Like, they're going to do, like, a skit with you? <laughs> yeah. And he was yeah. like... You're going to no, be in like, the audience? He, I know. Yeah. We were like, you got invited? That's cool. And yeah. he's like, no, I'm, I'm So he's going to do a monologue at the beginning? I mean, yeah. I would... Yeah. Whatever that's, the host that's exciting. does. Yeah, yeah. That's really exciting. Yeah. I'm just asking questions. I hope he wears yeah. the same shit. <laughs> you act like you've never seen Saturday Night Live. I don't watch a lot, but... So they uh, do it. It's, li- it's live television. Right? It's live. Yeah. Oh, I so thought you were serious. It's, it's on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at nighttime. It's at night. Saturday. I hope he wears Kim Kardashian's same outfit. <laughs> Just that pink. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. exciting that's stuff. Exciting. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Congratulations, right. Nate. I hope we get to see you again at some yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. Big relief to us. We thought we were being fired. And uh, <laughs> it didn't feel uh, that way. It felt, yeah. It's a little rude to roll the cameras for this. Yeah. <laughs> to bring me in. <laughs> we wanted yeah. your no reaction. No one's ever saw me and that's when I pop in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's great. Thanks, All right. Good exciting. work. Thank you, Abigail. Thank you. What's up, dude? Hey. All right. Welcome aboard. Dusty just called you fat, so I'm sorry about that. What? I didn't. I, I, I said that I, I, you know, I like to switch seats when I can. I'm not a big fan uh-huh. of that angle. Mm-hmm. And uh, Aaron was like, I like the coverage. And I said, well, Alex is bigger than me. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I and- didn't say, you know, fat. I didn't say you're a, a <laughs> brick wants, wall. Wants to I didn't spread say- out that Vietnam War jacket. Yeah. On his gun. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. You know what? I wear this and I always say that I think I look like a Vietnam vet and nobody ever seems to get the joke. Oh yeah, you do. Thank you, you for your look service. Like yeah. oh, it looked like no, you took some patches off of that before you put it on. Well, no one ever brings it up. And I, I actually had, had made the joke enough and people didn't seem to get it to where I finally stopped being self-conscious about it. Yeah. And uh, If you had a, like a Vietnam now, veteran's which is, kind of looks like a, the hat, you would definitely look like. Yeah. It. So if I, yeah, I mean, if I were wearing a uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Are we rolling? Is this the podcast? All right. Oh, great. Now I'm in trouble for making fun of Vietnam vets. Well, let's just, <laughs> why don't we just start it right now? No, I'm fine with it. Oh. Yeah, right. I'm fine with it. I'm okay. not making fun of them. Yeah. No, I don't think you were. Yeah. All right. So um, <laughs> where we been? Where are we going? Well, well, we get to we talk about who's here. Yeah. Oh, right. Hey. Oh yeah. Hey, big boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a wide person to cover up Aaron yeah. on this camera angle. Gee, yeah. I don't know. I caught a stray in all this. <laughs> yeah. I was just, I'm just trying that. to deflect it. But I'm happy to be here. It hit me. Yeah, Alex Valudo, Covering longtime my... friend of of the the Nate Land podcast. Finally, to ha- uh, happy to finally have him on. Yeah. It's taking me a second to get my bearings here, but I'm excited to have you here, Alex. What, one of the stars too. of the Nate Land Showcase. That's right. Yeah, that was way fun. The yeah. Nate Land Showcases that are out now on YouTube. Episode, I think three episodes are out now by yep. the time this episode airs. Uh, so check of, out Alex's set. A lot of people say that I've been bombing those sets, mm-hmm. but um, I thought they were very good. Now, there was one comment that said, man, Dusty bombed. And then they commented underneath their own comment and said, now that I'm watching it, I'm kind of like what he's doing. I yeah. like what's happening. People got to get into it. Yeah. They got to understand. I have a special comedy. Yeah. It heats up. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Crockpot comedy. Yeah. But you I thought it. you did great. Thank yeah. you. You did yeah. too. Oh, thanks. You've done my show a couple of times. People always like you. I They're always it. very excited. Yeah. It's always been way fun. Yeah. I don't, I'm going to stand up for you in those comments. I haven't really weighed in on there, but. Yeah. I don't agree with that. Get in there. I like to get in there. I like to go at it with Uh them. I love to do it. That's one of my favorite things. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't think people expect it. Mm -hmm. And then I come in with some heat. Yeah. I love it. It was kind of hard pulling comments this week because most of them Dusty had already replied. (laughs) 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 I'm like, oh, this is a good one. And then I say, well, who commented on? Oh, Dusty. I do want to address it a little bit because a lot of people thought that I was somehow making fun of people in wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. And I think you took out a clip. And I don't think in the clip it said we were talking about Southwest Airlines. I mean, that's my complaint is that you book, you know, you pay extra money with Southwest Southwest to get an A boarding area. Mm -hmm. I'm like A1, A2. I've paid all this money. And then suddenly tons of wheelchairs come in with people with them. And I said, sometimes I think people 
don't need them. And then people went at me about it. And then, you know what? Uh, I w- I'd like to read a comment if you don't mind. Yeah, let's get I'd into like, it. You know, let's just address it. Alex, you have joined a very special episode of the Nate Land podcast. This is uh, we're addressing some controversy here. Well, I realize how petty Dusty can be. I yeah. love it. Yeah, that's true. Sorry, I was waiting. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can find it. I've this saved- is like your podcast now. <laughs> I'd like to read a comment and then you listen for five minutes of silence <laughs> while he looks it up. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have done that in an amusement park when I broke my toe. I had one of those scooter things. Yeah. And I got to jump to, f- to the front of the line. Oh, uh, yeah. It was the best. Oh. All right. So that's one. So yeah. we've that's one documented case of faking wheelchairism. Uh-huh. Here's one. <laughs> wheelchairism. <laughs> True story. This is from a, a guy who commented. True story. I once got caught in traffic on the way to the airport, and then TSA looked to be at least one hour. This was a morning flight to a business meeting I couldn't miss. So I fake limped over to a TSA employee with a wheelchair and said I was recovering from a broken ankle. He said, hop in. And we proceeded to bypass TSA in five minutes and I made my flight. I'm not proud of this, but I kind of am. (laughs) So if there's two cases of faking, there's got to be more. He didn't fake his. Well, I don't know if it's Full on scooter was warranted, but I did rent the scooter myself. It wasn't given to me by a doctor. Right. So bit of yeah. yeah. So if two people have done uh-huh. it, more people have doing it. And a lot of people have commented that they have people in their family that have, you know, uh, you know, uh, disabilities that you can't necessarily see and they feel uncomfortable mm-hmm. because they feel like people think they're faking it. Right. The reason that people think they're faking it is because other people have been faking it. It's not my fault. Sure. And I also want people to be able to board early if they're um, uh, on flying, you know, they Uh should be able to board early. So we need some way to prove it. Right. But if it's Southwest, I think uh, you get five wheelchairs and then every person after that, you give the eight customers $10. I think- Not the wheelchair people, <laughs> Southwest. It's like, don't have me book an early flight, spend all this money, and then you're letting tons of people board in front of me. That's my complaint. It's about Southwest, not people in wheelchairs. You'd like oh, okay. the person who scans your ticket to have a hammer and hit each leg as they come through to make sure that... I don't want to embarrass. I don't want anybody to be embarrassed, and it's clear that I now can't joke around about it. So, <laughs> yeah. if you but, pay for that A boarding group, though, you, they should escort you in a wheelchair. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's expensive, and if I'm boarding American Airlines, it doesn't matter how many people board before me, my seat's secured. Right, mm. but with Southwest, okay. I've paid money to get on the flight early. And now I've been called ableist and a jerk <laughs> and all kinds of names now because. Uh, you know, I feel like Southwest is ripping me off. Well, I love to read your comments because, yeah, people were saying these things. You're like, come on, guys. We're just, jo- I'm just joking. Just making jokes. And then they said, I loved it when you tell men to get it. And you're like, well, I'm serious about that part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is true. And then they kept on you. And then you do what every celebrity does when they get busted. They turn it around on the media. It was taken out of context. The guy who did the clips talking about me, you know, the way it was edited. Well, I just bad. feel like it was left out that. Uh, that I was talking specifically about Southwest. Because mm. if you're American or Delta or United, you all have an assigned seat. So it would be weird for me to complain about wheelchairs getting on early. <laughs> right. You can go in early with that Vietnam shirt. Though. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you for your service. Yeah. <laughs> so next week we'll be apologizing for, <laughs> for all this. We're like Dwight Schrute when he had to keep apologizing. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I, you know, I want people that need wheelchairs to get them, and I want them to board early, and I want no one to harass them and think they're faking it. Mm-hmm. All right, there we go. That's all. I, I just Cleared wanted to say up. it. Yeah. yeah, but I do have some documented cases of <laughs> yeah. people faking. It. I am compiling. Uh, you know, evidence. And here. speaking of like military <laughs> stuff, you know, there are people that they'll, they get the whole military uniform and they go out to events mm-hmm. and they pretend to be veterans. Stolen valor. And there mm-hmm. are people that go out just to bust them on it. So mm-hmm. people are faking things for benefits out here. And it only hurts the people that really like, like someone faking being disabled hurts disabled people. Sure. Not me calling out the fakers. Right. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. Come on, guys. I'm here for everyone. <laughs> I'm here for everyone. All right. Well, we cleared that up. Yeah. <laughs> now you want to tell us where you are? 
Yeah, I was in Columbus, Ohio, uh, a city that I love. I go there a lot, and uh, there were hot shows. I loved it. My old friend that I started comedy with, Derek Humphrey, uh, did the shows with me. It was fun. We started doing comedy years ago when I was a big drinker, and it's fun to do comedy with my old friend. Mm. And uh, we had a great time. Zach Wyckoff out of Cincinnati yeah, was the yeah, host. He's, funny. Oh, he's great. Just a nice, sweet guy. And we had a good time. Funny too, but uh, we had a great time. Mm. I was, and, and a guy that <laughs> right. a guy that hosted for me and Aaron one time <laughs> has been now banned from the club and the whole mall. Oh, <laughs> who's that? I can't say. I'm not going to tell. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Right. get into it, but. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell why he was banned? Uh, I I don't know really, but uh, I just saw it on the wall, and nobody at the club really <laughs> wanted to get into it. Yeah, I think he would just do too well on the shows. Yeah, mm. so they banned him from the club. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> they were like, "We're doing you a favor to not hold you back anymore." Right, right. Theaters are calling. Mm. So his photo is on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Dang. Like it's, in the green room. Uh, in the kitchen. Uh, not the green room. Okay. I think if he's made it to the green room, they've already <laughs> dropped the ball. Uh, okay. You know. Don't let this guy in. The whole mall. Oh, the whole mall. Yeah, not just the club. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you really going to say something? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was just going to say, whatever you have to do have to, to anyway. get banned from a whole mall, but not get arrested. That fine line. Whatever that yeah, fine line yeah. is. I would like to learn more. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're like, you're not allowed to come to this mall at all, but no charges. Sure. Mm -hmm. So whatever. He stole a hot dog on a stick uniform, yeah. was posing as an employee. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think so. Uh -huh. I think so. That's the most likely theory. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was home. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you were waiting to say so much. Well, I, I was going to say a couple of things, but now okay. it's kind of, you know, defeat the purpose. No, no, no. You were home. So, uh, to all right. Eleanor to the uh, Nashville Zoo. Okay. Uh, Komodo dragons. I was a little disappointed in. Oh, um, me too. The signs say the dragons have arrived. I know. Yeah. If you're not in the Nashville area, you should know that they've been hyping this up for a while now. There are billboards everywhere. They're talking about it. We have Komodo dragons at the Nashville Zoo. I've been meaning to go check them out. You went and saw them and you were disappointed. Why? How many did you see? I only saw the one. Yeah. And it was should right when Komodo it opened. Dragon. Yeah. And he was pretty lazy. He yeah. seemed tired from the trip that he had just taken or something. Yeah. Well, I saw, I guess, one and a half because uh -huh. there was a glass encasement where there was like a baby one in there. Oh. And then I'm like, this can't be it. And then in the main area, there was one Komodo dragon. He just passed out sleeping, mm -hmm. taking it easy. And I'm like, we kind of walked a long distance up here to see one. When Did you, you bang on the yeah. glass a little bit, yell at it, do something. Well, the one that was sleeping, he's it's not glass. He's just out there in the grass. Oh, so you, can, you could get to him if you wanted. I mean, he's down like any animal that's. Okay. There's nothing between you, but you know. just uh, just uh, another animal in prison, not entertaining enough. <laughs> it did not though. <laughs> you, know, you think dragons existed, right? Yeah. And I thought maybe I'll see these things; they'll be so impressive. I'm like, yeah, that's what they were talking about. But this guy didn't really do it. When you me. went, was there the guy that was asking if anyone wanted to know about Komodo dragons? No. Oh, there was a. <laughs> It had just opened. He was really trying to get traffic. He's been Komodo fired dragons. since then. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh -huh. like, everybody's like, nah, we just want to see. It. <laughs> yeah. Did he work for the zoo or is he just a guy excited <laughs> to talk about it? Yeah, he worked for the Guys, zoo. Because imagine if I were just like a retired man mm -hmm. and I knew a lot about Komodo dragons, mm -hmm. this would kind of be my Super Bowl, right? Like uh -huh. a fish expert. Exactly. Like yeah. a fish expert yeah. at the aquarium. I would go down to the zoo, I would stand there, I'd make my own name tag. Mm -hmm. This guy was an employee of the zoo. Yeah, it wasn't okay. a stolen valor situation. Okay, there you go. Yeah. That we're aware of. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. I didn't check the uniform. Yeah. I really should have quizzed him. You should have. Yeah. yeah. He did say that if a Komodo dragon bites you, there's a bacteria in the Komodo dragon's saliva that will just coagulate all of your blood. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Seems like a bad way did to go. Did he say yeah. what coagulate means? Yeah. Yeah. It uh, scabs up your blood on okay. the inside. Oh, I was thinking thicken yeah. up. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a Thick syrup. Blood. Oh, I, yeah. I apologize for that. That's okay. Uh, 10, 15 years, you're going to have some blood clots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you get bit? No. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, this is what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to egg it on. 
Are there people out there wrangling them, or is are they kind of left to their own devices down there? No, they were just. It was the I laziest like, lizard I've ever seen. But alligators and stuff. So sometimes there's people down there poking them, getting them to do stuff. Who? I guess we're, like zoo employees. Yeah, yeah, well, not be, just random guys. Come talking, on, do something. Well, they're <laughs> herding them like sheep. Is there a? Um, I mean, is there something that's happened to the Komodo dragon? The reason that we have them at the zoo, like were they injured and we rehabbing them? No, I think they just these Maybe exhibits. Just bought some, right? I don't even think you buy them. I think you just get them on loan, don't you? From time to time, they have a booker. I think <laughs> that you have to go through <laughs> the agent, yeah, right? Come on, uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> But I just wonder, like, why do we have them in captivity? Have we just captured them and locked them up? Or like, because, you know, if you're at a zoo and you're like a bird and, and your wing was broken and now the zoo's rehabbing right. you mm-hmm. and you're in the exhibit, but one day you will have freedom again. Would this Komodo dragon be free at some point? Well, there are now fewer than 3,500 dragons uh, oh, this is left in the park. park. <laughs> oh, geez. This isn't even the right. They're endangered. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to we're trying to protect them a little bit. You know, so bring them to Nashville. Okay. Fourteen hundred. You would think in the that wild. we would just try to like restore their habitats. Well, yeah, that would be one way of doing Where it. Where do they live? The desert? I thought they lived off some remote island. Yeah, I think they're like they're close to the water. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I don't think they're like uh rattlesnakes. You know? Okay. <clears throat> anyway. All right. That's yeah, what so I was just, doing. Yeah. So what about you? Oh, I was at home. I went to the zoo. I, <laughs> <tell them. laughs> oh, I was on the road. I was with Kathleen Madigan this weekend, uh, Des Moines, Iowa, and uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Two great cities. Two, Amazing. Yeah. Two great theaters that I did with her. A lot of uh, folks in the crowd just by chance, which is pretty fun. They didn't know I was going to be on those shows to get All a right. hay bear at the show. I got a couple go jackets. All right. See, I missed the Go Jackets thing, so I don't know what that is. Oh, you weren't on that episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been seeing a lot of Go Jackets, and I don't get it. But I had a lot of people after the shows come up and say, you know, we listened to the podcast. We didn't know you were going to be here. That was a fun surprise. So I'm going to be back in those cities soon. So I want you to put your money where your mouth is and come see me do my own show at a considerably smaller venue. I'll be in Des Moines uh, this weekend. Oh, that's what people were telling me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm there in February. So warm them up for me. It's going to be great. It was I, hot shows. You had a hot to- hot yeah, shows with they Kathleen. Were great, yeah, Kathleen, she, she's the best. awesome. She's the best. She's awesome. Her crowds are great. They get it. They're a little, uh, yeah, they're great. Anyway, Alex, I was just in uh, Charlotte and Atlanta, North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah, no, yeah not one of the offshoot Charlotte. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. you gotta be specific. Charlotte, yeah. Idaho. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I was with Gary Goldman opening for him. Oh yeah, Whoa. yeah. He's uh, got a new book out. Yeah. And it's amazing, and he's doing material based off of the book, so he's not oh. doing readings from the book. It's material based off of the book. Hmm. But it's, is it like a book tour, or is it stand up? It is shows? a book tour, but he's doing stand up. Oh, he's interesting! Just Gary Goldman's great. He had a joke about grapes, grapefruit, that, uh, grape, grapes, and grapefruit. Yeah. yeah, the grapefruits of wrath. I think he called it. <laughs> yeah. I love that joke. Yeah. Gosh, yeah, it's so yeah. good. He's really, really funny. Yeah. He spoke highly of you. Oh, good. Yeah. I oh, told him I awesome. moved to Nashville and he, he said he really likes you a lot. Oh, yeah. Did he really say that? Yeah. Okay. He didn't yeah. mention you guys, but. <laughs> That's okay. There's no reason he should. <laughs> yeah. Do move here. I hope Gary listens to this. You do, do have a tone here. of voice where I uh, I can't tell if you're serious or yeah. not. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to ham it up a little more, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I do see what yeah. It's like you could do the Home Depot commercials, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. What about his voice makes you think Home Depot? <laughs> you don't think he sounds like the, like the voice can, from the Home Depot commercial? I'm trying what are you to, talking about the commercials where it's, uh, what's their motto? Dusty, you used to Well, it there. used to be, you can do it, we can help. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I think now they're like, get it done or something like that. <laughs> get it. Get it. <laughs> That's what you have to tell men. Get it. Mm. No, I'll be honest, Brian. I, I like Alex's voice, but I don't think of like home repair when I hear it. Mm. You know right. I mean, I don't think of DIY uh-huh. projects. I don't think of lumber or renting a pressure washer or anything like that, really. So I don't know if that would be the yeah. best voice. <laughs> All right. Well, that'd be an interesting direction for them to go. I mean, I'm open for it, but yeah. uh, I think more Maybe, like a yeah. Keurig commercial, something like that. <laughs> or even the plant department. Uh huh. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> (laughs) 
indoor plants. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right, indoor plants. The whole, could you voice maybe something for us right now? <laughs> yeah. We got those uh, little pink cactus uh, yeah. that, are, that are totally fake. Yeah. Yeah, pink we got cactus, those. not where the Komodo dragon lives. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Fun. All right, when we get into the comments? Let's get into it. Where man. were you at in Atlanta? Uh, I forget. This is a big theater. Oh, cool. Yeah. Buckhead Theater? Yeah. There you go. You knew uh, it. That's a good spot. Look at that. Yeah. It's right wow. near the punchline. Okay. Nice. Fantastic. Well, we got some comments here. Who's going to read them? <laughs> Alex, you reading them? I'll read the comments. Yeah, get into it. Let's All get right. into All it. Right. Kate it. Smith. Whoa. Thank you, Kate. Uh, this was, I, don't, I don't know why I'm thanking her yet. Okay, because it doesn't sound like it's starting well. This was the most unhinged episode to date, and I dare and dare I say my favorite. Oh, okay. Thank you, Kate. Needed some more time on Miracle, though. Yeah, we did. Yeah, that is an underrated sports movie. Well, this week's comments were a little frustrating for me because it was basically just everyone listing any sports movie that we did not mention and saying we should have talked about that anymore. how could you not yeah. i made a list here i don't it's pretty long i thought i'd just maybe rattle off a few here okay yeah. uh the air up there blades of glory blue chips brine song brink coach carter cool runnings the cutting edge dodgeball draft day eight men out 80s million dollar cook-off that was a disney movie yeah ford versus ferrari uh, Are we just on the Fs so far? <laughs> <laughs> Glory Road, High School Musical, The Hurricane. Brian, this list is so long, dude. We're not even. We're at G right now. Well, it's it's long because you keep stopping me. <laughs> you gonna get all the way to Z? <laughs> well, there's no Z, but I would have already been there if you had to stop me. All right, I'll jump to T. Teen Wolf, Thirteenth Year, We Are Marshall. Teen Wolf, you know, people mention Sorry, that. I just I didn't know how long that list. <laughs> well, I told you it's pretty <laughs> long. You <laughs> read off a hundred different movies. Teen I mean, Wolf, though, you shut us down last week and did an episode too. <laughs> Teen Wolf's not a basketball movie. I agree. It's a movie about a wolf, a, a, a werewolf family, mm -hmm. and the guy is real good at basketball. Yeah. But that's not the main thing. Well, basketball is how he expresses his humanity. So I'd say it is a basketball. Well, <laughs> do you know Teen Wolf? Have nah, you seen, I've never yeah, seen it. it. <laughs> yeah. The wolf is Jesus. Our, our friend Court McCown is in it. Though. Yeah, he is. In it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Comic here in Nashville was on that basketball team in the movie. Pretty crazy. It's a great movie. Yeah. Well, but, thank you. Kate. And I've never seen Miracle. I would like to see it though. All right, Jay Gar. Oh, these comments are from Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Apple Podcast Reviews, and Nate Land at NateBargazzi.com. Jay Garrett Ball, Aaron Dusty, and Buttermilk <laughs> killed it this episode. We already knew. Uh, we already knew Dusty isn't sure about the moon landing or the curvature of the earth. That's your words, not mine. <laughs> but now we find out he thinks silent G's are a hoax as well. Well, uh, one guy wrote a comment with a lot of silent G's amongst the other letters, you know, wow. in other words, like though. And that's few, not what I'm talking about. Yeah, a few people. No. I'm talking about that. I don't start with a silent G. So really just the word euro. So that's how do pretty you, much it. And Gnat. And, yeah, I was uh, going to say Gnat. <laughs> and Gnomes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So <laughs> it's really just three words. Yeah. That you don't mess with. Yeah. Yeah. But Nat would be pronounced the same way whether the G's there. I You're... say Gnat. No, you don't. Every time. I just don't believe that you say Gnat. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> I just refer to them as flying insects or no see -ums. No like see -ums? No see -ums. That's In Charleston, that's what we have, no see -ums. They're flying gnats that <laughs> bite off. <laughs> <You're doing that. laughs> oh, man. That's Ooh. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Gnarly. Uh, Ram, <laughs> Ram Huther. <laughs> Ram Huther. Graham Huther, I spilled my morning coffee when Dusty you said- didn't say the G there. <laughs> <laughs> said Ram I Huther. Know, yeah, yeah. Well, I said that yeah. first. Just yeah. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. Keep Good up, joke. Alex. It was a smart podcast. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I we really nailed it with the coagulate jokes, earlier. <laughs> yeah, but. there you go. You're right. <laughs> I spilled my morning coffee when Dusty said, get it, in regard to deborning a plane. Totally worth it, except cleaning up this mess is taking more time than it should because I'm still crying slash laughing. All right. All right. Well. That's nice. It is. And and it's like, you know what? I was 
uh, getting, I was going through security in Columbus, mm -hmm. Ohio, mm -hmm. going home. And there was a pilot in front of me and the line was taking a really long time. And I was just complaining out loud about it. I kept going on and on. And then we finally get through and the pilot in front of me goes, he goes, hey, are you Dusty Slay? Yeah. I was like, yeah. He goes, I was at your show last night. Are you serious? And I was like, oh, I was like, I'm sorry about all that complaining I was doing. He goes, oh, I thought I was hilarious. Oh, okay. So that's good. I'm crushing it in the TSA yeah. line. Yeah. Ashley Yoder, as someone who was born in the 90s and is a female who doesn't want sports. I think it's supposed to say watch sports. Doesn't watch sports. I loved Aaron's references to the Disney Channel original movies. I could relate to every category of sports movie because I had at least seen the Disney movie. Oh, there you go. I'm glad I could bring that to the podcast. I yeah. don't know that this is not watch. I think she doesn't want them to exist. Well, well, if, I was going to say if you're a <laughs> if you're like a girl who doesn't like sports, Aaron's the person for you to, there you go. to identify with. Yeah, well, those Disney Channel original movies, they really explored a lot of these alternative fringe ESPN, the Ocho type sports. You know, and I was, I think that's good. Now, there's one called Luck of the Irish. Luck of the Irish is kind of loosely a basketball movie, too. So okay. that, that could have been mentioned. I was going to read it, but you shut me down before we got the L's. But but a lot of people <laughs> called you out on that one for not mentioning that oh, one. I'm sorry. It's really not that good of a movie, to be honest with we you. But it was have, kind of fun. We okay. just didn't have enough time. Yeah, that's all it was. Yeah, this yeah. is, you know, we'd already spent two hours talking about stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Rant Morgan. All right. That's it. <laughs> Grant Morgan. Aaron pointed out that Remember the Titans and Sandlot were not historically accurate. Is he aware that Joe Montana, who was on the team at that time, says that Rudy is completely made up and almost nothing is true other than Rudy got in the game? We all both took a sip of coffee at the same time. Like, this is some kind of scandalous moment. Is no, I didn't know that. Oh, it was addressed to me, so I guess I should have just started talking right away. Yeah. No, I was not aware that Joe Montana had commented about it. Rudy's not completely made up. I don't know what that means. I think he's meaning a lot of what's in the movie is sort of, they took our, some artistic license with it. I think he was a real person, obviously. It's a real guy right. named Daniel Rudiger. Who Was he friends with the janitor? <laughs> I think a lot of the the characters in the movie, like like we would do it if we wrote a movie about our lives, they're an amalgam of of different people, or they're like exaggerated in some way. We would write a true movie, and then um, a network exec would be like, "Well, uh, they would ask us to put things in. They would mm -hmm. go, oh, but." Who are some of, what was his love interest? And you're like, this guy was not getting women at all. <laughs> Wait, is this a movie about me? Yeah. <laughs> that Brian song. <laughs> yeah. They take out your actual marriage because it's not believable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, you're telling me this guy was married here? Yeah. Uh, Come on, guys. This isn't science fiction. <laughs> um, I think Joe Montana, based on something i think you said on mm -hmm. this podcast said that rudy they weren't a big fan of his like three kind of people joking around at the end of the game put them on their shoulders i thought you said that on this podcast so that was oh ironic. yeah i talked about it. it he was probably super annoying for the real players on the team mm -hmm. i get that but completely made up sounds like it's like yeah there's some conspiracy there was never a rudy like like montana's a rudy truther <laughs> but like he's a real person. He yeah. got in the game. Yeah, yeah. So that's all fine. I'd like to know more about it. Let's get Joe Montana <laughs> on the podcast. Well, there's video of just the actual to talk play. about this. Yeah. Have you seen video of the actual play? Mm -hmm. Pretty grainy. It's mm -hmm. kind of it's kind of a co tackle. Co yeah, yeah. He's not in the movie. He's the main guy making the hit. He yeah. brings him down. But it's uh, you know he was kind of he was in the mix. Mm -hmm. The real clip. All right. Tony Motts, Aaron said James Earl Jones' character told the boys that he played with Babe Ruth, which Aaron said could not have been possible in real life because the color barrier wasn't yet broken. True, Babe, Lu Babe Ruth <laughs> would not have been able to play against black players in the majors. However, he would go barnstorming uh, in the offseason where he would compete against black players. That is true. In the movie, though, he's presented as if he played against him on the Yankees. There's a picture of them in a major league ballpark, and he, it's talked about in a way that he – they're suggesting he played with him in the MLB. I um, watched – Take that, Tony. You watched the clip of I it? I watched it last night. I, the I, whole movie? 
no, just the clip of that uh, scene because a lot, too. few people called you out for saying, no, he could have played in the Negro yeah, League and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, and I agree. It the way it says, it certainly makes you think that they. He said, I could have broken all the records if right. I hadn't got hit with the ball or whatever. Yes. Yeah. And then I read where the writers, I guess, was the Sunlight a book before it was a movie? I don't know. The writer said that the, that character. What? No, I, I just love that idea that we would be reading the Sandlot. <laughs> <laughs> I might if it was a book. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Sounds like a good kid's book. <laughs> Mr. Myrtle, I think was his name. Yes. He said, didn't have color. Like he wasn't identified as black or white in, in I guess, the book. Right. And then they got James Earl Jones to play the character. They're like, I can't oh. believe we got James Earl Jones. So then they're like, we got to rewrite it a little bit to make it not so obvious that he it's like they were okay. they were kind of aware that that wouldn't make total sense so they wrote the character before they casted a, a black actor for it yeah and then they kind of rewrote it it's like the shawshank redemption i hate to bring it back around to shawshank like i always do but morgan freeman's character is not a black guy in the book he's an irish guy named red yeah and then they cast morgan freeman and in the movie there's a line they go why do you call you red and he goes maybe it's because i'm irish mm -hmm. And it's wow. funny in the movie because mm -hmm. he's obviously not Irish, mm -hmm. but in the book, it's just an Irish character. Yeah, how about that? That's hilarious. Fun. Yeah, that's great. I love it? that. Yeah. yeah. Grant Warstel. <laughs> Grant. <laughs> I took theology class in high school Ooh. that was based around watching movies like E.T. and The Green Mile and discussing how certain characters were metaphors for Jesus and what lessons we could learn from them. I think Aaron would have really enjoyed it. That sounds like a, a lazy teacher, doesn't it? it sounds <laughs> yeah. like a substitute comes in, <laughs> puts on a movie and goes, how does this relate to yeah. Jesus? Who was Jesus in this movie? <laughs> E.T.? Oh, nailed it. Yeah. Because he was healing people <laughs> yeah. with a finger. Yeah. He was, you guys seen E.T.? Yeah. I yeah. never have, no. I think he healed that kid's cut or something. Really? You never it? have? No, I never have. Mm. Have you read that part in the Bible where Jesus makes the bike fly? <laughs> He no. does a sin. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, yeah, true. That's true. But not on a bike. Didn't need mm -hmm. it. I mean, I always felt that way about... Uh, <laughs> E.T. was weak. <laughs> Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Good versus evil. Sure. And Luke would kind of be the metaphor for... May the yeah. force be with you kind of thing, like, too. That's the Holy Spirit. Spirit. What mm -hmm. is the force? The force is the Holy Spirit? That's how I always do it. So some people have access to the Holy Spirit and some people don't? <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I well, don't, I don't well, it's true. because they're they've crossed over to the dark side, and once you're on the dark side, there is no, it's no coming back. Okay, <laughs> all this is very accurate. Yeah. yeah, Princess Summerland. Part of what made Rocky so great was the music. Think about it: Bill Conti's score and the songs like "Gonna Fly Now" just pulled every emotion through the movie. Fantastic. That is true. You know, I always think about there that scene in Rocky where he's arguing with his, you know, not yet manager um, in in Mickey. his apartment, Mickey. Yeah, and then they get into the fight, and then he he basically kicks Mickey out, and then he runs, mm -hmm. and then Rocky runs to get, or he walks away, and then Rocky runs to get him, and then I think a real soft piano starts mm -hmm. to play. It's so emotional. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When uh, Mike McKeown was on, I said that was my favorite scene in Rocky. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, it is. I, I tried to show that movie to my nephew when he visited one time. You know what he did? Fell asleep. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, what time of night was it? He's five. Now was it he, a night? It was nighttime. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. How late? Not that late. Okay. Not, not, I mean, I was still awake. Well, I'm, how old is he? Seriously. He's 10 years younger than me. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's not okay. a little kid. I thought it was like a 12 year old. You're no, he's to a grown man. You start a movie at 11 p.m. <laughs> he's a grown man with a child of his own. And, okay. Uh, it's like he fell asleep. I, I wanted to, he had never oh, seen it. Oh, he's a father. He's probably exhausted. No. You can't blame it on him. He man. wasn't a father at that point. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he just, uh, I was so bummed because I was like, I really want to share this movie with you that you've never seen. And he yeah. fell asleep. Yeah. And you can't be like, hey, hey, hey wake up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Watch this. He's about to lose. Yeah. I, think you should, <laughs> yeah. you should go. I want to experience this with you. Yeah. I don't think that's too much to ask. You know, I'm showing you a movie I like, means something to me. Yeah. And it would mean something to me if you participated in this. You know? Yeah. <laughs> that's a big risk what do you mean well because you're asking hey take two hours of your life watch this with me and then if he still doesn't like it then he's like this guy's an idiot <laughs> yeah then it hurts your feelings more yeah yeah julian turns switch 
turns wit. We've read Julian's comment before, haven't we? I believe so. I remember that last name. Yeah. Turnwitch. Turnwitch. I don't know why I said switch, but that that witch, if you scramble those letters up, you can get switch there. That's mm-hmm. true. Yeah, you move that S around. Yeah. Generally, I generally get my useless information from this podcast, but on the question, why do they call pants a pair of pants? I already knew the useless info. Mm. Originally, pants were not one piece of clothing, but two separate legs put on individually, individually like socks and fastened at the waist, kind of like chaps. <laughs> well, that bad. is unbelievable. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> what do you it's mean? It's a bad design right off the bat. Well, listen, I'm not saying there hasn't been progress, uh-huh. but I'm saying that, uh, that at least answers the question. I've never that seen a drawing true. or anything or any depiction of any time in history where I guess tights, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't want to Google any of this, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> that one might be a risky Google one. Google old chaps <laughs> to see what pops up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, you, you might get start getting ads for two, two <laughs> separate legs. Yeah, I don't want that. I don't need that at all. I want it to be one thing. Chat pop-ups. <laughs> Doug Robinson, what are your thoughts on this? A sport is any competition that you can – directly affect the outcome everything else is a game so bowling golf chess are sports gymnastics figure skating snowboarding half pipe are games ufc and boxing are sports since you can knock them out or in the fight before it goes to judges thanks and i'll hang up and listen i That's think fine. i think sports has to be um you have to really be doing something physical. That's why I think chess is out. Everything else I think is a sport in this category. My my opinion. But we talked about it the the mental stress of an intense game of chess. It's so intense that it actually is a physical endeavor. You burn to calories. a certain extent. You burn a lot of calories just with the focus that it takes. That's why we talked about blindfolded chess being banned in certain countries because of the physical effect that it has on you. You don't buy into that. I would think it was because they kept knocking the pieces off the board. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. They're really heavy pieces. He's like, take the blindfold off. You're knocking all the pieces. You're like, Oh, I didn't see it. You don't move the chess pieces. (laughs) All your blindfold. (laughs) (laughs) Sounded like a great idea. We didn't think this through. That's so funny. Uh, (laughs) No, that's against the rules. You can't do that. Now I like what you're saying, but I do still think there needs to be a physical, physical aspect. And somebody commented about NASCAR that I think NASCAR, and I think you have to be very, it's very physical too. You're driving, but you're driving really fast. And I think it's a lot of intensity. Okay. So I still think NASCAR is a sport. What makes a good NASCAR driver? I don't really know the answer to that. A great name. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I mean, you got to you know, you got to be able to handle it. It's, you know, of every r- racing movie we've ever seen, they have a wreck mm-hmm. and then they have, uh, you know, mental things to battle back from the mm-hmm. fear. They have to overcome <laughs> the fear they have to get in the car with a cougar. You'd be a good race around. driver then. None of these are. Your wrecks and <laughs> hasn't yeah. affected you at all. Nah. I but almost, none of these are physical endeavors that you just described. Oh, you yeah. Understand? But I mean, you need some upper body strength too, I think, to, to turn the wheel. Yeah, I think so. Because <laughs> you're going very fast. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. All right. I mean, this is just, you know, these are my I just opinions. think that you're not a chess guy. I like chess. Do you really play chess? I do. I do. I don't play it actively, but I do know how. Okay. Mm. And I've played it. I like uh, I like a speed chess. I don't like. Oh, because I feel like if you play people that are just no time limit, they'll just think all day. And I'm like, let's just go. We can do another game. Mm-hmm. We can do it again <laughs> when this one's over. Let's go. Let's I like to be precious with it. I like to. I like yeah. to just move. Let's get it going. Like you know, we don't need to. It don't have to be so fast, uh-huh. but you know, a minute to think about it before yeah. you move on. You like to hit yeah. that little clock. I'd love to have the clock. Yeah. yeah. We're definitely not putting chess and NASCAR in the same category, though. No, that would be ridiculous. No, I think there's imagine- more overlap than you're giving them credit. Really? Can you imagine though? You're hanging out with uh, uh, a UFC. You're hanging out with Conor McGregor, and you're like, "I'm an athlete too. Uh, I play." <laughs> I play chess. Have you heard of it? <laughs> wow. Can you imagine though? Yeah. I think you'd have more respect for it. You think? Than you think. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you, you, they, you I'd get to a certain point. You just respect competitors, dude. Well, you just I respect don't respect competition. I don't disagree that they're not great competitors. 
Mm -hmm. and they're not smart people. Yeah. But I just don't call that a sport. If you had to go undercover as an undercover agent, Mm -hmm. pretend like you're on one sport. I feel like I've already asked this question, but I'll ask you. No, I like this. What sport could you fake your way through? At what level? The professional level or collegiate level? Professional. And the other guys on your team, they'll they'll be in on it with you. So they'll, they'll know. Oh, I could pass off as a long snapper, I think. Do I get any time to get in shape at all or right now? I think pretty quickly you got you getting thrown in undercover. And do I have to actually compete? Like, do I actually have to be in the game? Yes. Do I have to play? That's part of it. Okay. Long snapping, I think. I'd be the worst long snapper of all time, but I at least, I'm the closest to the build of it, I think. Where yeah. they wouldn't maybe tip off the other. Where it wouldn't be immediately obvious. I mean, you think that guy looks awful, but you wouldn't think this guy is, is a fan. Mm-hmm. That they just pulled out of the crowd. I, I, I think, think swimming for me. <laughs> yeah. I think if I got Dude, citizenship die. in one of those obscure countries, like in the Olympics, you sometimes see those really slow swimmers. Yeah. Listen, in the Olympics. I used to, when I used to drink, I would hang out at the pool at my apartment complex <laughs> and I would be, I would be, you know, pretty buzzed up and I would challenge people to race people in better shape than me and then beat them. And it would really upset them. I'm a great swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> but you you yeah, have but- the opposite build of every high level swimmer that there is, dude. Look at Michael Phelps versus I'm, I'm not tall, saying, slender, double I'm not jointed. Saying I'm gonna be I'm not saying I'm ready for the Olympics, but if I get a little time to train, I'm going swimming. <laughs> I think it needs to be uh, some type of team competition where they can keep you out of the actual playing as much as possible. Uh, okay. Yeah. Like in, you know, in baseball, always put the worst kid out in right field or whatever. Sure. Um, I think for me, it'd be soccer. <laughs> I went to the Nashville SC match, you know. That's where I'm going to disagree. And <laughs> <laughs> it's such a big field. I can't yeah. believe you would react like that to me about swimming, but Brian's a soccer player. Well, the whole <laughs> can point I finish of my this, thought? Okay, well, can I sir. just clarify one thing before you yeah. before you finish your thought? The whole point of this is we could blend. You're supposed to blend in and disguise yourself. That's and you saying. picked the sport. <laughs> <laughs> you picked the sport where it's, it's the most physically obvious that you're not a professional swimmer. You have to I take just, your shirt off. And Yours. You're five you're foot three. Speedos. You don't have the build. I look all right. Yeah, I got you, good shoulders. I'm not saying you're in bad shape, but I'm saying these guys are. You built look like a like, Vietnam veteran, and now you're out they're there. They're like swimming. the Winklevoss <laughs> twins, and then you're standing out there, five foot three. You know, you, you look like a Saturday Night Live sketch if you're out there doing it. I'm just you're hosted saying. by Nate Bargatze. Let's race next summer. I'm racing. I know, but you're <laughs> basing on what you're best at, and. If I'm you saying, think the gauge for you could pass as a professional swimmer is to beat me in a swimming match, <laughs> I think you're highly mistaken. I'm not saying I'll win, but could I pass as a swimmer? Like that no one so. would be like, oh, that guy. Talking about at like the Olympic level, like not Ryan Lochte, the, not the Michael Olympics. Phelps. Well, that's what we're talking about, the highest level. Oh, the highest level. Could you I pass mean. as a guy at the YMCA who likes to swim? I bet you could. <laughs> well, but any kind of organized event, no. <laughs> They'd be like, what is going on out here? I think you got to see me swim. <laughs> That's true. That's true. We have not seen you <laughs> swim. Well, I was going to say soccer because the field's so big, and those guys are just out there walking a lot of the times. Oh, for the most part. I would yeah. just stay off in the distance. Nobody <laughs> kicked the ball to me. I would just fake my way through the whole, okay. whole match. Yeah, I think people. I'm buying it. I think they'd be talking about you in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> One guy, go, look at number 30 over there. He's so winded. <laughs> He's not moving. What about you, Alex? You thought about this at all? Uh, I'm going to go. I think I could do the sweeping and the curling. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You a skater? No, but uh, well, yeah, sweeping we, seems we covered pretty this last easy. Week. You don't have to skate to, to do curling. Yeah, it's oh. just on your feet. I think it helps. <laughs> I think just being comfortable on the ice. Yeah. yeah. I remember I talked to a kid in college who played hockey and he told me he goes you're not gonna believe this dude but i feel more comfortable on ice than i do on land <laughs> and oh, I, you know, like, at the time i was like cool and then i thought about it for years like i just don't believe that's true no nah. nah, i think you're walking you're walking around great yeah right now he goes you're not gonna believe this and you're like you're right about that <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you would never you I mean you're an amazing swimmer you would never say i'm more comfortable in the water no okay good no because we're no, not I supposed to be say in that, that but okay yeah Mm. I do feel pretty good in there. Right. <laughs> a lot of people compare me to Kevin Costner in Waterworld. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jake McCleary. Ooh. 
I'll admit, I used to be, I used to also be on the dump dusty bandwagon. However, one episode he said that the best Applebee's he has ever been to was in Orem, Utah. That's true. It is a good one. That Applebee's is five minutes from my house. So I took that as a sign from up above to give this dusty guy a chance. And now he is my third favorite person <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> Congrats, Dusty. And thank you all for a wonderful show. How about that? Right. Who's fourth? Probably Nate. Yeah. Yeah, you think so? <laughs> no. Nate's a distant no. fourth. It's me or Brian. And I don't even want to find out who it is. <laughs> what was, is so special about this? You knew this Applebee's too? Yeah, that was now, my home Applebee's for a you're while. You're from Orem, Utah? Well, I lived near there for a while. And you would travel. You uh-huh. commute to this Applebee's. Yeah. Well, well, that's where Utah Valley University is. Oh, uh, UVU. And mm-hmm. I went down there, the Wolverines, mm-hmm. and I went down there to do a show. And they were like, meet us at the Applebee's. And there was a bunch of people there. And I, I was like, Kind of in my head, like, geez, Applebee's, huh? Mm-hmm. And it was really good. The service was great. It was very friendly. It seemed very clean. I had salmon. It was delicious. Yeah. And just all around a win. And you knew about this. Yeah. Alex, what's special about it? Uh, I had my first drink there. Okay. <laughs> Dusty That's... had his last drink there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's so where I got you, in. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you knew about this already. You knew about this Applebee's. Yeah. Would you say that's the best Applebee's you've ever been to? Probably. Yeah. Just because of the sentimental value of that. That was a big bombshell I just dropped, by the way. I'm oh. sorry to no, bring that okay. up. I will say this, though. I had one of my first <laughs> drinks as a 21-year-old in an Applebee's. It wasn't in Orem, Utah. It was in Opelika, but I had quite a few Long Island iced teas in a Applebee's in Opelika, Auburn area, and yeah. I got real sick. Do you think that'll trump Nate's announcement about SNL? <laughs> <laughs> that'll be Close the key second. takeaway from yeah. this episode. <laughs> My mom's going to be real disappointed, but mm-hmm. yeah. Mm. Think of how good that'll be for us. You mm-hmm. know, Nate's on SNL, and then he comes back, the podcast gets even bigger, and we're just here. Yeah, along so for the just, ride. We're just milking it here. Do you think there will be a bit of a Nate Land bump? I think so. After SNL? I think so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, there will be speaking along for the ride what you tell us about electric e-bike oh i'd love to tell you about electric e-bike fall it is fall now isn't that <laughs> crazy yeah. wow time flies the year just flows by yeah fall is the perfect time to shift how you see things and experiencing the season from an e-bike can accelerate all the great things about getting outside electric e-bikes are a fun easy and affordable way to get moving go to electric e-bikes dot com to learn more about their wide selection of e-bikes that start at just seven ninety nine with the XP Lite. I have one of these. I gotta say, I love it. It folds in half. I put it in the back of my car. I can take it on the road. Sometimes you don't want to drive somewhere. You want to see the outdoors. You want to hop on a bike, but you don't want to exert yourself too much, right? You want to get a little assistance from an electric e-bike. I love it. They have quality feature-filled models financed as low as $73 a month. It doesn't cost a fortune. These are on the on the less expensive end of the spectrum here. I looked up a bunch of the competitors, a mm-hmm. bunch of nonsense out there. Electric e-bike. Ripping you off. They're affordable. Mm-hmm. A range of customizable, adjustable e-bikes to work with whatever you need. You got a cargo e-bike, the Expedition. You can even add passenger accessories to certain models. And I'll say it again. I've said it once. I had to call customer service. I was dreading calling customer service. I immediately got a human being. They were friendly. They immediately helped me with what I needed. Cannot recommend electric e-bikes enough. Shift into a new way of getting out there with an electric e-bike, like their XP Lite starting at just $7.99. Visit electricebikes.com to find the electric model for you. That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C-E, bikes.com. Boom. I love how you said wide in that. That's a good, yeah, it fun. was a good ad read. It's You're fun good to randomly that. accentuate a word like yeah. that. All right, last comment here. Shalane Brower. As a proud Utahan, I love hearing that Nate and the guys Is enjoy- that how you say it? No. What but do you say? Utonian? Uton. But, Uton. Yeah. Uton. Oh, okay. How'd you what, say what, it? What, you, you, I kind of- Uton. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. I like extra syllables. I like to throw I the I never H liked in there. Utah. Utah. Yeah. Utah. Uh-huh. You don't like the G's, but you like the H's. Uh-huh. I love an H. Ooh, a G would be good in there. 
U T A G H N. Yeah. You talking. Yeah. Like you're dogging it. You talking. <laughs> As a proud Utahan, I love hearing that Nate and the guys enjoy coming to Salt Lake City. Did you know the Sandlot was filmed here in Salt Lake? Whoa. I'd love to hear a Utah episode, but I don't think we're really churning out famous comics that could be guests. Well, you're right That's about true. that. Yeah, yeah, I'm not famous, but. Well, you are famous. You bet you got yourself a dry bar. You're multiple all, dry bars. Multiple dry bars. Multiple. You're okay. all over the place. More than anyone, maybe. Well, I'm just not famous to Shalane, I guess. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe she just thought there needed to be multiple. Oh, yeah. okay. Or, or he. I don't know if Shalane is a guy or a girl. And maybe she knew, she knows you so well, she knew you moved to Nashville, so you don't technically count. <laughs> Oh, that's true. <laughs> Anymore. But anyway, this week we are talking about Utah. I'm glad we're talking about Utah because I'll be at the Wise Guys in Salt Lake City on New Year's this year. Ooh, how about it's that? Very exciting. So I'm glad we're talking about it. I think we've all really enjoyed we, – you were just got back from – I was just there a couple of weeks ago. Yep. Yeah. And you were there recently too, right, at the same club? Yep. Nate was just there and sold 32,000 tickets, I think. Yeah, so or, more than me and you record. combined. A little bit, a little bit, a little yeah. bit. <laughs> but I always have a great time when I go there. I think I've been to Salt Lake a few times, Provo twice to do two dry, dry bars. It's beautiful. The clubs are great. Um, I don't know why Alex would move to Nashville from there, but, you know. Well, well Nashville's a hot spot. Yeah. Well, is this like your first Nashville. time living somewhere other than where you grew up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's a whole that's a whole thing in and of itself. Yeah. Yeah. And I like Nashville when I've been traveling around. So okay. I thought it'd be good. Well, I, what didn't you like about Salt Lake? What didn't you like about Utah? Let's get into it. Oh What's boy. bad about it? Wow. We've been sitting here hyping it up. The people uh -huh. are nice. It's beautiful. Let's get into the. I mean, it was really hard moving away from that Applebee's. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it was. I get it. It was, it. It was hard for me to leave. Yeah. Now that you bring it up, I mean. I could go for some Applebee's right okay. now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll go after this. Uh, Salt Lake City <laughs> is really great. I loved it. When I came back after, I talked about, now I went one time in 2019 before COVID and uh, walked around the city and I was just blown away. There were all these um, uh, uh, Mormon people walking around, Mormon <laughs> women in, in just, they just were dressed real classy like, mm -hmm. not like the, you know, just the uh, uh scandalous <laughs> outfits i'm seeing around the uh, around the country when i'm traveling right. it was just it was just beautiful women in just modest clothing and i just loved it i came back and i just talked to my wife about it so much that she started like harassing me about how much i loved utah ladies <laughs> but i just was like really impressed by it uh That's good. and i just i loved it I remember when you said you went to Temple Square. I walked around their yeah. Vatican. Yeah. yeah. I was swept up by it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I went there, it's too. Not, but yeah. there's, it's kind of an understated beauty. It's not like uh, gaudy. Yeah. Gaudy is not the right word because I don't think like the Vatican is gaudy, but it's very like uh, it's a lot. And uh, what do you what was it called? Temple Square. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not like there's not stained glass windows everywhere, yeah. statues and stuff like that. Catholics have had a head start, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, by a couple thousand years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably. I mean, we started with Jesus. So mm -hmm. it's kind of got kind of got a hey, leg no, up. You know? <laughs> 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 but uh, man, they had but they had some uh, but women out there. Yeah. Help I'll tell you something questions. about the the yeah. missionaries at Temple Square is yeah. that they put the best looking Mormons there. I could tell. I yeah. have a joke so. about that. Oh, really? Yeah. What's the joke? Just about how... Is it in your dry bar special? <laughs> no. <laughs> that would have been the place to do it. Well, yeah. when you and I were there, yeah. we went to Temple Square right. and we walked around for a little while and then we were like, is that a mall over there? And then we spent like twice as much time at that mall, I believe. Uh -huh. I so I told that joke. But I talked about how they put the best looking women mm -hmm. at the information desk. Yeah. So you get there and like, this is a bunch of hooey. And then you see these women like, well, I might as well hear them out. Yeah. They're like, let us know if you have any questions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> right. I, you yeah. know, I want to be open-minded. <laughs> maybe, maybe I do want to get into another testament. You know I, mean? <laughs> I always thought the Bible wasn't long. <laughs> <laughs> They know what I, they're doing. Yeah, I remember you called them succubi, though. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what they are. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Yeah. Good looking ones there. I got sent to yeah, South like America. That. I don't know what that means. I don't know, oh. I don't know what a succubus is. Mm -mm. Like a, it's like a, uh, uh, an ocean kind of animal. Kind of like a, a siren. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So an ocean thing. Yeah, or loosely, any kind of I wasn't thinking water. ocean at all. Oh, okay. I was thinking lake. 
Oh yeah, <laughs> salt bottom water. <laughs> yeah. like it's salt. The lake. temptresses yeah, yeah. of the lake, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean I, that mall is great too. I've been to the mall down yeah. there. I've been I walked all over. You know, I did. There's a video on my YouTube about my my time in Salt Lake City, and I loved it. I went to a barbecue place. I had beef brisket, delicious. Uh-huh. I've been all over a little. You know, a little bit all over. And, there was one time when after our show, me, you, and Alex, we went out to eat, and we started sharing. Some of the worst oh, jokes dude. that we'd ever tell. Oh, about. dude. And that's one of the top five hardest I've ever laughed. You had to get up from the table. You were laughing <laughs> yeah, so hard. Brian told a story, and I'm sure you'll tell it, but we we're just to preface it, we we're telling like the worst joke you've ever told. Okay. That maybe or a, heard from someone else. Yeah, but Brian's was about his own joke. <laughs> but it's a, it's about something you maybe took pride in at the time, but now looking back, it's really cringy or whatever. Now, Brian, set the seed for this. This is so funny. Well, I don't even know if I completely remember the joke, but it was something about when I was single, I would <laughs> ask the crowd, are there any single ladies here? And then maybe one, we go, ooh, whatever. And I say, oh, I, I met shingle ladies. We have any shingle <laughs> ladies here with shingles. <laughs> <laughs> and I told that joke for a while. <laughs> that was my closer. Is that the whole joke? Yes. <laughs> I meant shingles, ladies. Oh, and he said the part, ladies with shingles. I mean, the disease shingles. <laughs> I wanted to clarify. Yeah, that was one of my go-tos when I first started out. <laughs> oh, man. That's but the worst I've ever heard. There's no more to it? <laughs> I mean, that's the part I remember. At this point, Aaron had got up from the table, so. I couldn't just imagine <laughs> Brian doing that. Oh, I mean, shingles, ladies. Huh? You get it? <laughs> <laughs> so when I first started, it was one of my go-to. Hey, I, I thought it. it was honesty love- time here. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes all you need is to set it aside as a comic and then you can revisit it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I want you to bring yeah. that joke yeah. back. Dust it off a bit. Yeah. Go any I mean shingles, ladies. I'm married, okay? I'm not looking for the single women. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's and a different then, spin on it yeah, now. Yeah, tell them why yeah. you're looking for ladies with shingles. Yeah. What do you cause you know you're like, I want my daughter to get chicken box. You know what I mean? Come <laughs> on to the house. <laughs> Now we got a great punchline. Yeah. It's actually a good bit. Yeah. <laughs> Fix the joke, Dustin. Yeah. Brian's going to open his third dry bar special with it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a good bit. I like it. Yeah. We know the name of my new dry bar special. Shingle, shingle ladies? <laughs> question mark? All, all the shingle ladies? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you liked it, you should have put some cream on it. <laughs> 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 oh, that's Dustin, great. you're writing my whole new album. Yeah. Oh, oh man, <laughs> boom. <That> rules. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Let me share some Utah facts here. Let's do it. Um, the name Utah is said to derive from the name of the Ute tribe, meaning people of the mountains. Yeah, oh, I can see that. That's yeah, nice. yeah. Makes sense. A lot of mountains there. Mm-hmm. That's true. We went hiking. There. We did, yeah. You got a bit out of that too, right? I did. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. good stuff. That's when you bought your drone. I think I just bought a drone, flew it illegally around uh, the mountains of Utah. It's yeah. a good time. Yeah, we're just going to share stories from our trip every time. I mean, yeah. I keep bringing it up. I've driven through those mountains, going out to Wyoming. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Did you do you take it? See, I every time I'm in Utah, every day you walk outside and you go, "Geez, that's awesome." Those mountains everywhere. Yeah, you do take it for granted. I'm sure. I was yeah. wondering, like, you probably by the time you're, you know, uh-huh. you're just like. I don't even care anymore. Yeah. That it's an unbelievable view. Yeah. There is good hiking scene though. That's great. Hiking, yeah. Dude. Yeah. Underrated outdoors. Mm. The nature out there. I don't think of nature when I think of Utah. Oh, see, I do. I think there's some, a lot of, there's a decent amount of country songs about Utah and, um, who's the guy, Marty Robbins. He sings a Utah Carol song. And okay. it's like, you just think of Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, Montana, to mm-hmm. me, I just think of open range and mm-hmm. mountains and big skies. Yeah. Got That's five right. national parks. Wow. Five, Do you know the five. Delicate Arch? Yeah, I know of it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a popular? Yeah. It's, it's on, on your license plate? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's on the license plate. Yeah. Millions of years old. What is it? Like, a? Wow. It's a oh, yeah. I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do, Do you, you believe in erosion? Is? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I believe things can erode, but I believe that they exaggerate it. They're like, <laughs> if ever they can't explain something, they go, oh, millions yeah. of years it eroded and it, it became this uh, kind of archway. Uh-huh. But before that, it was, you know, 
somehow this little part didn't erode where the rest of it did. Yeah, I could maybe get behind that theory. So if you're listening, how, how would you describe this? This is just a rock formation that looks like an arch. Mm-hmm. It's a delicate arch. Is it that delicate? Like, could it be pushed over? Yeah, that left side, they say, is going to go pretty soon. Just go just by natural causes yeah. or people are going to... Well, there, yeah, people have been, they deface it every once in a while, which mm-hmm. is not nice. But it's like a pair of pants to yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like a pair yeah, of pants. The delicate I think chaps. That right it here. was a giant <laughs> yeah. that, got, that got caught up, and it used to be a whole uh, stone statue of a man. But, oh, okay. Uh, okay. The top part but the got... erosion has gotten there. <laughs> He's wearing uh-huh. bell bottoms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it was a thing back then. Yeah. Are you allowed it's to touch like it? it? Have you been there before? I haven't been to this national park, no, but I do think you're able to to touch it. Get right Most up on right it. There. Yeah, well, they need well, a lot of people. The Olympic torch ran through it. Yeah. Really? Wow. OJ? Uh, Was it the year OJ carried the torch? No, I didn't know OJ carried the torch. Oh, yeah, he did. It's probably the biggest thing he's done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's what he's known for. <laughs> he did carry the torch. Wow, I didn't know that. I would not want to do that. You have to run with it. <laughs> it would be it would be an embarrassingly yeah. short amount of time before imagine I go. getting winded with somebody the torch. else oh yeah. yeah dude i'd have to go hey somebody else want to take this real quick yeah. it's the honor of a lifetime they're like where's this guy at you're walking <laughs> puffing <laughs> lighting cigarettes off of it. <laughs> that'd be the best smoke of a lifetime then. you put yeah. it down on the ground for a while just to, <laughs> uh, stretch your arms Let's take a break <laughs> It's uh, the smoke. The smoke's thing. getting in my lungs. Well, we already said that Utah's called Utahns. Mm-hmm. Is there any state besides, I was thinking about this, New York, where it's not, it, it ends in an N, what you call the people? What do you mean? Tennessee, oh, that doesn't end with Hoosiers. But people in Indiana are called Indianans, right? I think they're called Hoosiers. Okay. Well, that's an unusual case. Like Tennessee, yeah. Tennesseans, California, California. Alabama. Yeah, Alabamian, most states ended at end. Mississippi and mm-hmm. Floridian. What about Michigander? Okay. Oh, that's an unusual one. Yeah. Right? I guess. Is that right? Washingtonian. All right. I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm just asking. Well, well that's why I asked the question. stuff through before you ask. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that was what it was. I asked the question. I know. I'm just kidding. I don't even know if those that I said are correct. Yeah, but, I didn't uh, know a lot of those. I don't, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I don't. Oregonian, right? I don't. Oregonian. Well, uh, European trappers and fur traders were. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brian. <laughs> I feel bad. So the just first, kidding. I, I moved on. I went. Uh, okay. I didn't hear right, what you said. All right. All right. Uh, city of Provo is named after Eti- Etienne Provost, one of the first uh, trappers in the area. Tra- huh. What's a trapper? Like a someone who catches animals. Oh, okay. traps them. Trap. I didn't know he was a trapper. Skins. I know I'm related to the second mayor of Provo. Wow. wow. Yeah. Not okay, the second. Yeah. It's not a great <laughs> accomplishment, but what it's, was it's better than third. Yeah. What was the name? Uh, I don't remember. I just remember it's the second <laughs> mayor of Provo. If it was my cousin, I think I would, yeah. I would try to remember that. Well, in my defense, genealogy wise, if you're from Utah, it gets a little confusing. Oh, a lot of, of the, inbred stuff? Well, <laughs> almost Jeez, opposite. Dude. Yeah. The polygamy. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that yeah. the opposite of? I think oh, enough maybe. polygamy. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> oh, that's kind of a big, I haven't thought about that. Yeah. No, it's like, we got the same dad, different mom. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so your family, you have a long history of the Utah. Your whole family's from there. Uh, yeah, on my mom's side. Okay. Yeah, my dad's an Italian immigrant. Oh, yeah. how about it? Yep. Mm-hmm. Is is there? polygamy in your family tree yeah uh big time <laughs> <laughs> like like not your dad or is that why your dad no no moved yeah to, no. Your dad's <laughs> like, listen i'm italian but i'd like to spread the voluto name around a bit <laughs> that sounds good <laughs> <laughs> uh, we need more voluto is what he said that's right uh. no it, it uh went out um 
when did it go out? 18, they, 19, 18, yeah, they had to yeah. they had to get rid of it to become a state. Yeah, you're killing me here. Alex. Yeah, you know no, too I'm much. Sorry. I'm used to people who know nothing. But. Well, that's not. I don't. I hate. Uh, I do hate government overreach like that. It's like, come on, it's like, let us. We're like our own state here. Let us do our own thing. Yeah. There's no need for the federal government to get involved in what we're doing here in our state. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Should go back to that. <laughs> there's a, you know, there's a lot of single moms out here. I'm sure that you know you could have one. Uh, uh, you know, if they had a man that you know had a lot of money and right. he could, you know, he could really help out with the kids. Yeah, you know what I mean. Wow, yeah. government overreach, <laughs> ridiculous. Hey, come on. Well, do you know the state of Deseret? Did yeah, I say that, that was, right? Yeah, that was Desert. the original name. Until they, yeah, Desert. <laughs> <laughs> you know about that one? Yeah, right? yeah. What's the state of Deseret? So they wanted to create their own state. Uh, just the Mormon Church wanted to create their own own state, and uh, it was like a big area. It wasn't just Utah. It was like Arizona and part of Nevada. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, jeez, look how big this is! Yeah, that's all of Nevada, all of Utah, bunch of Arizona. Is it? We looking at the same one? Yeah. It was never recognized by the U.S. government, but I guess for for two years it existed. Mm-hmm. Because that was just all, that was those, you know. Oh, wait, I didn't know that was the flag. So I'm running off a hotspot here on my phone. The Wi-Fi's down in here, so it is pretty slow. So, I'm in support of it. I like Deseret. Yeah. <laughs> You're That's okay? something, yeah. Yeah. something to do with bees, I think. Yeah. 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 So Deseret means honeybee in the Book of Mormon. And that's why they're the honeybee state. The bee state is Utah. That's the, why they're Salt Lake bees. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. okay. Everything's starting to connect. Yeah. And a honeybee is like polygamy, but in a different, <laughs> in a different way. Right. It's like the one queen, a lot of husbands. Yeah. I saw that out in public once, a reverse polygamy situation. Really? Oh. Yeah. You can always tell the polygamists in public, they kind of look like Little House on the Prairie and Elaine Bennis. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Bennis hair. You know <laughs> what I mean? Elaine yeah. Bennis hair. Yeah. yeah. And there was one... One Elaine Bennis lady with two well dressed dudes in suspenders. I was wow. like, yeah. Wow, I didn't know that she, was a thing. Yeah. Where at? She's getting like it. Like a T Mobile store? Or uh, Walmart. Walmart. There you yeah. Go. Wow. Close. I said it was called the Honeybee State. It's called the mm-hmm. Beehive State. Beehive State. Beehive. Okay. Yeah. I just took your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> it was chosen in 19, 1848 because bees represent perseverance and in industry. Mm-hmm. So 70,000 settlers moved to Utah from the Mormon Church. So they were. In Illinois, then uh, Joseph Smith died. I guess was killed. And then Brigham Young moved. He on. was killed. I believe so. Right? Mm-hmm. By whom? Do we know? Smith? Angry mob. Oh, an angry yeah. mob. Wow, that's Are the, the worst Utah- kind. Utahans? Yeah. No. He no, they there. were in Illinois, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think I mentioned this in the Illinois episode because I said the city wrong. Nuevo. Navu. Navu. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah. <laughs> People email me again. Why was he in Utah? Time. Why was he in uh, Illinois? Got to start somewhere. Yeah. I thought he started. What, they, started started in, they started in. They started in New York. He never got to Utah. No. He never saw the promise. Land. Joseph Smith didn't know. Wow. Well, was it crazy? The He's the Moses. Land. Moses of the. I thought it was the promised land. Was it? I thought they oh, just moved there because they thought feels it was... like it to me. It's a great place. It is a great place. Well, if you want more information on this, there's a way to get more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where did you go on your missionary journey? Uh, far from Temple Square. I uh, went to South America. Whoa, like whoa. Paraguay. Paraguay. Yeah. Wow. How long were you there? Two years. Two years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's Alone fun. or did you have friends with you? Uh, you always have a companion with okay. you. Yeah. What did you do? Uh, proselyting, preaching. Did you That's build, not for me. It was you the drill, Mormon church at all? You drill, well, we're just trying to get some basic yeah. questions. Did you drill mm-hmm. wells? Very basic. You're mad at us for not knowing stuff, and now we're <laughs> trying to find out stuff. Did you so. drill wells, though? No, nah, it wasn't so much service as, as preaching. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, we did some light yard work, I remember, with machetes. Now, I imagine you get pretty close with that guy who's with you, right? Yeah. For those two years. You still talk to that person? You're still in touch with him? No. Okay. It was too much, actually. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You well, they're they're good other. dudes. I kind of keep up with them on on Facebook. Okay. But yeah. Facebook allows you to keep up with people without really having to talk to them. Yeah. You can t- you see them and you go, ah, no, I know what you've been up to. Yeah. I see you, kids. Happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good to see you, but no need to catch up. Uh-huh. I get what you've been up to. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. 
You want to tell us about Helix Sleep? I sure do. This, thanks to our <laughs> friends at Helix Sleep for sponsoring this episode. Um, I have a Helix mattress and Helix pillows, and I love them. Mm. The mattress is great, but I always say, I mean, those pillows, I will not sleep without the helix you do pillow. talk about the pillows a lot. i love mm-hmm. last night i i now i have to fall asleep I, or I, I i i lay in my daughter's bedroom until she falls asleep mm-hmm. and then i get up and go and i left the pillow in there and last night i risked waking her up to get the pillow it was worth it it was worth it even if she woke up it was worth it to just lay back down on that pillow it genuinely is the best pillow i've ever had and uh no one can ever change my mind on that Helix Sleep is our favorite premium mattress <laughs> brand with tailored mattresses. Until we get another sponsor. <laughs> no, it is the best. Yeah, I'm telling you. That thing's the best. Tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. The Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux Collection, the new Helix Elite Collection, a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, Alex and uh, <laughs> and even you and, realize that's how I entered the room, right? <laughs> What's up, fatty? <laughs> and even a mattress made just for kids. Take the Helix Sleep Quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. Helix mattress are shipped straight to the door, free of charge, with easy no contact delivery. Uh, take and it is fun. They come in, they're all wrapped up. They're real oh, small yeah, and then you yeah. open it up and this thing just un- unfolds. It's a yeah. lot of fun. They offer a 100 night trial to try out your new Helix mattress and offer a 10 to 15 year warranty depending on the bottle. Model, not bottle. <laughs> Unlike a lot of mattress companies out there, uh he I can't I don't know why I, I, as I read it I, I'm starting to not be able to read. Uh unlike a lot of mattress companies out there, Helix owns its own manufacturing facility. Mm. Every Helix mattress is made by a team of skilled manufacturers. Helix supports military first responders, teachers, and students by giving them a special discount on site. By supporting Helix, you are allowing them to support us and Nateland. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helix.com slash Nate and use code helixpartner20. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Wow. That sounds amazing. Yeah. It's, such, it a good, it it's such a good product. It's a good product. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good company. Have you ever heard of the North Shore Monster? No. Is uh, that a Great Salt Lake thing? Yeah. Wow. Uh-uh. It's called North Shore Monster or Old Briny. <laughs> <laughs> Old Briny. <laughs> no, I haven't. The name really drops off there for it, doesn't it? Well, I like Old Briny, kind of. I mean, so suppo- supposedly this guy put two wells into the Great Salt Lake as a tourist attraction, like in the uh-huh. 1800s, and then people would see like this monster <laughs> in the lake and... I think it was just dead whales floating. <laughs> I don't think a whale can survive a in that thing. crocodile-like body and the head of a horse. Oh, wow. That's a weird kind That sounds like a Loch Ness it? monster to me. Yeah. yeah. I think it does. Yeah. Wow, good for us. We got one. The creature made a fearsome bellowing noise and charged the workers, the people who first saw it, who promptly ran up a nearby hillside and hid in the brush until morning. Some believe the monster was a buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> Others blame these sightings on related cryptids, <laughs> such as the Salt Lake whales or even the Great Brine Shrimp. Huh? I think I think Loch, a Loch Ness like creature exists. I think so. Some of these lakes are so deep, the oceans. We don't know what's going on down at the bottom of the oceans. <laughs> and I think some of these big lakes like that. I think there's creatures in there that we don't know about. Yeah. Okay. Could be. Well, local legend maintains that in 1875, an entrepreneur by the name of James Wickham released two whales into Great Salt Lake <laughs> with the intent of using them as a tourist attraction. Uh, they then disappeared. And they were never seen again. Scientists now believe they could not have survived yeah. due to the high salinity <laughs> of the lake. So they didn't know this in 1875, but they just killed those two yeah. whales yeah. immediately. They just immediately died. And that's why the, the Loch Ness-like creature is so upset. He's like, you're just killing things out here. <laughs> And he's like, you're not going to, don't be putting no more whales in here. Right. Because I'll take them out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who do you guys think is the most famous person from Utah? Oh, Ludacris, T.I. <laughs> yeah. Uh, John, uh, and, and, and Carl me, Malone. Well, I was going to say, does it count if they're a professional athlete that came there to play? Does that count? 
I think it's it has to be Utah's own. Hmm. I think that's the point of the question, right? Okay. Who, who's the, a son of Utah, a son or a daughter of the state of Utah? Okay. Because I would have said that Osmond. too. But yeah. The Osmond? The Osmonds? Yeah. The Osmond families from mm-hmm. there? Okay. Well, I don't know if their fame has really stood the test of time. Right. I know who they are. I don't think I could pick them out of a lineup being a 31 year old man. I you know, Donnie and Marie. And I think nobody under me. Knows. Oh, I met Marie Osmond. I was on the TV show Nashville Squares <laughs> oh, nice. with Marie Osmond. Oh, OK. Yeah. Well, well God, this proves my point. But I think I know him primarily from a family guy cutaway. Oh, yeah. You know, there's one that's kind of. A, <laughs> that's what I know. Him. Yeah, I looked him up from that. So I don't know if people. It's really diminishing the legacy of Marie Osmond, you know. I what did they she, do? Were they singers? Yeah. What, She's what, had a lot of work done, but she was still pretty attractive. Yeah. Yeah. What are uh, what's a, their big song? Is is there one? I, I don't even. I that. don't even know. Oh, okay. A little bit country, a little bit oh, rock yeah, and yeah, roll. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock and roll. Yeah. I'm a little bit country. He's and a Donnie little and Marie bit. Donnie Marie would. Yeah. They would oh, a little back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. 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 Okay. Whenever I ask this question, I always feel like there's two different types of answers. There's the one where okay, that is the most famous person, but would you have known they were from that state? Oh, okay. And then there's the one where, oh, yeah, I think of that person from that state. You know what I mean? Right. Because I'll just tell you off the bat, just total transparency. When you say name a person from Utah, I think we're all thinking the same person. Alex Alex Romney. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Mitt Romney. Yeah, yeah. And he's not even from there, is he? Uh, no, no, he's, he's from not. Massachusetts. Right, his father was governor of Massachusetts, right? And he was governor of Massachusetts, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Alex Faludo's the oh, most that's famous. That's hilarious. Person he I didn't even grow up there, Utah. huh? I don't think so. Wow. Why do I think of he was a he's a senator for Utah now? Yeah, and he ran for president at representing Utah, and he brought the Olympics to Utah. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was instrumental mm-hmm. in that. But mm-hmm. I don't know much else about it. Uh, who? What here's, are what are some a, good ones? Here's a wild card that yeah, uh, Elizabeth Smart. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Oh, that's a fun one. Yeah. I think Nate would approve of that. Who's yeah. Elizabeth Smart? She was abducted and she, she was. She wasn't famous before the kidnapping. She was a kidnapping she, victim. Yeah. She was abducted. She was found alive and, and she's still an advocate for mm-hmm. for stuff. But yeah. She was abducted from something. Not Lakes getting and, kidnapped. She's an advocate yeah. for, for not getting kidnapped, I would bet. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, It'd be weird if she went the other way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, really, it wasn't Now, wasn't bad, she, guys. she was like not far from where she was abducted from, I think right? so. Yeah, she was just like, I think like a couple miles away or something the whole uh, time. How long was she gone for? Like a year? Gone. Yeah. Were like you in? Months. Gone's not how, the right what, How old were you when that happened? Uh, I think I'm her same age, actually. Oh, wow. So, what, was she, she like 12? Yeah. <laughs> no I don't one know how wanted me. Was. Uh, Yeah. But she was gone for, I, don't, I forgot how long she was I saw her after she was found. She was working at a bank. Really? Yeah. And I wanted to be like, there she is. <laughs> but Well, that's too bad. You get kidnapped for a year and then you're like, well, I'm still got to get a job. Yeah. But now <laughs> she's like a celebrity, right? Isn't she on like a talk show or something? She's not Marie Osmond, but I think people know who she is. But I thought she was on like. I had never heard of her. Could that you look up anything. and see what she's doing now? I thought she was yeah. on like a Good Morning America or something. Are you thinking of uh, George Bush's kid? <laughs> i don't know maybe sure uh, uh, steve see. steve young well she is a commentator for abc news oh, can i see a go. picture of her yeah it's just gonna take a second to load here okay. because i'm running off a steve, mobile what about steve young steve young oh, yeah, wow, up okay. there. yeah. is he from utah or is he just oh, uh yeah. he's the grandson of brigham young right or great great grandson or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. yeah, he's got me beat with the mayor of Provo. I was gonna say, that's up yeah. there, man. Yeah, that's big time. Yeah. Um Roseanne Barr's from Utah. Oh, that's right. Dang. Yeah. But like you said, I don't think people think Utah nah. when they think of Roseanne. Yeah. I would have said Colorado. They think Applebee's before they think Utah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I don't yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I maybe I saw her TED talk. When you were preparing for your own? Yeah. I was like, I don't have any business doing this. <laughs> yeah, she was not having a good time no, at all. No, no. <laughs> Hers is calling. It wasn't happening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a few others. Um, Butch Cassidy. Um, were the, the Sundance Kid? Well. The other one. He was. The movie was Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Oh, oh Robert the, Redford is technically from there now. He has a home, Park City. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. We claim him. Yeah. Jim McMahon well. played at BYU. Post Malone. 
We're claiming him now. Oh, wow. really? Yeah. yeah. He should. Yeah. Is he from there? Now he is, dude. Yeah. He's Gary, got a house. Gary Coleman? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Gary Coleman died, I think, in Provo. But the, but not, that, not born in Utah, though. Yeah, so I guess it doesn't count. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Utah, it's, yeah, it's kind of slim pickings here. Who did it? Who? To Gary Coleman. An angry mob in Illinois. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some interesting news. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> at, the, right. at the Willis Tower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that, hey, that was good. There right. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's you talking about? Uh, the first ever KFC was in Salt Lake City. That's right. Did you guys uh, know that? I didn't know that. Yeah. That franchise. doesn't seem to make sense at all. Mm-hmm. No, it doesn't. The first KFC, the first Kentucky Fried Chicken. I think it was the was first franchise. UI, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so the first <laughs> franchise, but not necessarily the first store. Right. I think it did start in Kentucky, Kentucky. but I hope so. He yeah. franchised it out in Utah. Okay. That location okay. has a like a wax figure of him in there. Oh, yeah. I love fun. that. Is there a signature food in for Utah? In the way that there is for fry sauce. Yeah, that's right. Fry sauce? It's a condiment. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. our signature food. I know what fry sauce is. Yeah. But it's amazing. <laughs> I didn't until recently. I just think of it as ketchup mayonnaise mixed together. Matter of fact, that's Aaron has sauce. quite a story about French fries that I still think about from time to time. Oh, uh, yeah. I've told it on this <laughs> yeah, podcast yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. When I was in Salt Lake this time, I went to Crown Burger. Mm. Is that a. Utah? Yeah, that's the. That's like the best burger place. In, in Utah, yeah, and I don't know, I I really love it. That, and they're like, you gotta try the fry sauce, mm-hmm. and I didn't even know what it was. What is fry sauce? It's ketchup, uh, it's ketchup and mayo. If you want to get crazy with the little pickle juice, okay, yeah, it's real good. I don't I know. I make some not... of that fry sauce sometimes yeah. at home. I like to make my own sauces at home. Put a little Worcestershire in there. Ooh. You make ketchup from scratch? No, no, no. Like I'll, you know, mix some of the other sauces and oh, make my own. You just church it up. A bit. Yeah, give my own. All sauce. right. Well, we're just saying the famous fry <laughs> sauce is ketchup and mayonnaise and pickle juice. So you're making mustard from mustard seeds. No, <laughs> no one day though. One you're day. Just adding a little liquid smoke to some barbecue sauce. Yeah, yeah I like this to, is a dusty sauce. I now. Like to, well, that's what all sauces are. When I used to work at Jim Bob's back in the day, we would make a special sauce. It was ketchup, mayonnaise, yeah, uh, Worcestershire, salt, pepper. You know, those sorts of things. That's like I watched a video of some guys making barbecue sauce. And they're like, well, we start with ketchup. And oh, like, yeah. Well, that's a bit disappointing. Yeah. This is just, you just did stuff to ketchup. I watch Restaurant Impossible a lot. And uh, this guy. With was, your boy, right? What's the guy's name? Robert Irvine. Robert Irvine. Yeah. Irvine Improv. We're friends, or I'm at least friends with whoever runs his social media. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, you know, he was showing a guy making his special barbecue sauce. And one of the ingredients was barbecue sauce, <laughs> but he was just, it was like a store-bought barbecue sauce. And then he was adding different things. Mm. I was like, this is, this is not your yeah. sauce. You yeah. think that's considered hack in the <laughs> condiment world? Yes. Yes. But you yeah. took my sauce, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been to Tony's Burgers? I haven't. But you are familiar with it? Uh, no. Did you go? I did. Just yeah. because there's a sign up for celebrities who can eat for free, and Nate's one of them. And, uh, oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. There's like, did you make the wall? Did I they didn't... recognize you at all? No, no. And then I, I he made t- the wall for a different reason. He I was going to make go in my back. mind <laughs> like the guy at the yeah. wall. <laughs> I was going in my mind. I was going to make this funny video, and then I go in there and I totally chicken out. And the girl behind the counter, some teenager, and I'm like, "Hey, I'm friends with <laughs> him," and she was like, "She could care less." And I totally yeah. balked and like, just give me the number one. So. I w- I've told the story before, but I, th- I don't think I've told either of y'all. So when Brian and I were in Salt Lake City last year, we were walking around the mall and uh, we had a show that night. So we were just walking around, checking everything out. And this guy stops us and goes, Brian Bates, Aaron Weber. We were like, yeah. He goes, get out of town, man. I listen to podcasts all the time. We we're like, oh, great. He goes, can I get a picture? We're like, yeah, of course. So he hands his phone to his girlfriend and he takes a picture of both of us. He's like, so happy y'all are here, man. It's good to see you out. And we go, you covered the show tonight? And he goes, nah. <laughs> that's when I that's when the reality of how hard it is to sell a ticket. I mean, this guy knew us well enough to go, oh my God, and get a picture with us. Mm-hmm. He knew we were in town and was like, nah, I'm not gonna come to the show. Oh, that's tough. Yeah. The yeah. guy likes podcasts, hates comedy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get it, man. I hope he's listening to this episode. Yeah, he's yeah. gotta be able to pause it. He doesn't like the live experience. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Honestly, some of my shows are small enough where if you just ask me, hey, can you just take a break for a second? <laughs> yeah. I would go, let's take a little bit of an intermission here. Yeah. Why don't everybody get up, get a drink, use the bathroom, <laughs> yeah. come back in five. Yeah. I'm in favor of bringing back the intermission for movies. I don't know why we don't do that. That would be great. Yeah. An intermission for movies so you could go pee. Yeah. That'd be really great. Get a certain age. I get that. I get that. But it's already a pretty, how long an intermission are we talking? 10 minutes? 15. 15 minutes. That's pretty long. Let's go 10. I think that would yeah. get me out of the movie. I think that's an argument. But what happens when it's like you, you have to pee real bad and you're watching the movie and you're like, oh, I'd really like to go to the bathroom, but I don't want to miss part of the movie. So are you really in the movie if you're just in your seat right. like this going, oh, I got to wow. pee real bad? Are you really in the movie? They should have tickets Good for people that want to pee. Or catheters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Get them at the concession stand. Yeah. yeah. Just a little. little yeah. I agree. They're the same amount of ounces that you get of the drink. Yeah. And you just can kind of. <laughs> Twelve dollars for a catheter? <laughs> Do you know where they're selling catheters for anywhere else in the country? Give me just give me two cups. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that second cup keeps filling. You're like, oh boy. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. You you hand me your cup. Quick. <laughs> It's a good idea. There's a movie theater by my house when I lived in Hendersonville, and we used to go there late. And um, the drink machine was around the corner to where you couldn't be seen by the the cashier. Mm -hmm. And so we'd go. They wouldn't give you just a cup, but if you would go, can I get a dip cup? They would just give you. Oh uh, yeah, it's Hendersonville. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so they go, <laughs> they go, I got a dip. Can I just get a cup, and they go, Yeah, I got you. Then you could just take the. Fill it up with Coke and they would have no, they wouldn't know. Oh, yeah. But they'd give you one if you were dipping. Huh. A little life hack for people out there. <laughs> Just lie and say you're illegally yeah. using yeah. chewing tobacco and in then, the theater. And then put <laughs> Coke in the cup and then spit yeah. in the carpet. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> really take advantage of their kindness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you know if you go in a wheelchair to the movie theater, you get the catheter for free? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have we talked about, you know, at the original, the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., it used to be a huge problem with people just spitting tobacco on the ground, on the carpet. Because these guys would be sitting back there, they'd just throw in a huge chaw, and then they just spit on the carpet, and it apparently smelled horrific. I bet so. For years and years and years. And then, because they weren't using spittoons, mm. they were just letting it go on the ground. My stepbrother growing up would tell me that's what they would do at school. They would dip in mm -hmm. class and just spit in the carpet and rub it oh, in with their foot. Yeah, oh, it's disgusting. Yeah. Dude. My friend's dad was a guzzler. Meaning he would just drink it. He would just swallow it. Yeah. Which Ugh. is, it, it makes me sick to my stomach. Yeah, it's stinking about it. I had a boss that would do that. He would walk around me in low stores with the dip in and they, he would like never spit. I was like, oh, dude. Now, I don't hope that person dies, but I would like to see their stomach. I would like to see an autopsy of that just to see what that does to your body. Yeah. It probably tears you up. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Anybody know the state slogan of Utah? Um, Come and get it. <laughs> is that it industry it's a good guess is it live free or die hard <laughs> <laughs> i think the longest one is the greatest snow on earth oh yeah okay the greatest snow on earth yeah that's pretty lame playing off the greatest show on earth oh that's a weak pun <laughs> i don't think it's based what is the great <laughs> you don't i think uh so the greatest show on earth like the st louis rams or maybe that was the greatest show on turf. Oh. It's Barnum and Bailey <laughs> Circus. <laughs> Why would you? Oh, okay. the greatest yeah, show I think on the Earth. state oh. was around before the circus, but, I, but the yeah, slogan, the slogan might not wasn't. Have been. Yeah, you're right. Because so. of the, you want to know why? Because you have good snow. <laughs> the Great Salt Lake makes it extra powdery. Oh. It's like salty, kind of salty snow. Oh, yeah, that's fun. It's good that packing fun. snow for, for the whole snowball state. fights. No, it's bad packing snow, oh. but good for skiing. Oh, Ooh. yeah, it's a big ski state, right? Mm -hmm. Do you ski? No. Sorry. Right. We ended that one. Yeah, right. that really took it Do you down. guys ski? Either you guys ski? No. No, I've never even tried. I never would ski. Never will. Just out of principle, or are you just scared, or what? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, maybe both. <laughs> um, I, it's not that I'm... Would you snowboard? I don't think so. I don't like things moving under my feet like that. I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to... Water skiing is a bit of an exception. You're swimming. But like, because I feel like you can hang on to a thing. Yeah. Uh, but skiing seems, uh, I don't know, like skateboarding is too, I don't like that. You know, like a conveyor belt at the airport? You don't like to walk on those? 
Oh, I do, but I, you know, I like to move. Well, and and oh, okay. but they also got grips. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. I'm not alone on it. You, you know, know, like a bike. A bike. I mean, standing. Oh, okay. It's like it just feels like I'm gonna fall out from under me. Yeah. I'm not trying. It's not like a silent G for me. I'm not trying to <laughs> call it out, but it's like when I'm standing and something's moving under me, I just feel like I can't keep my balance well. Yeah. You don't like the feeling of losing control. Yes. You like to be in control. Yes. Of everything. I get yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I think you just get good at skiing. I think that's the goal, though. Yeah, for sure. If mm -hmm. I, you know, if I grew up in the snow, I mean, but, you know, you grew up in Alabama, you see snow once every four years, maybe. An and, inch, maybe. Yeah. And it's weak snow. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it was always really expensive. Could never afford. Oh yeah, yeah kind of a. It's a, a rich, rich man's person. game. Yeah, yeah, or, or lady. Mm -hmm. rich man's game. Yeah. Now in Johnny Tsunami, the <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the kind of class division was the snowboarders were like the poor cool kids, and the skiers were the rich, kind of stick in the mud type kids. Yeah, do you find that there is there a division like that? Yeah, skiers are more elitist for sure. Okay, and yeah. the snowboarders are real, of the people. Real snooty, yeah. Okay, uh -huh. interesting. Kind of like take roller a hard bladers versus skateboarders. Right. <laughs> oh, I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know if that is a good parallel. <laughs> have, you seen, yeah. have you seen those land skis no. that are roller skates? Oh, no. Like really horrific. long r roller skates with poles. Oh, no. Yeah. People do that? Yeah. You do that? No. Okay. Look I real do that. Foolish. Just for You're fun. okay with that, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll support okay. that. All right. You keep us on our toes. Cause <laughs> <laughs> nothing's consistent. Yeah. No, I would not like to do that either. I, you know, I, I roller, I used to go to the skating rink a little bit growing up mm -hmm. and I fell a couple of times and I just, I didn't like it. I you would know, do it in a skating rink. It'd stand out. I think that'd be cool. Get on the skis. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that was my voice again. That no, I didn't no. sell it. I like it. All right. Well, guys, our next partner is AG1. Oh. All of us are trying to take our AG1 every day. What? Oh, That's we, my ad. We didn't even try. Well, you guys wouldn't shut up about your stupid skateboards. And, <laughs> oh, man. I mean, it derailed the whole podcast for the last oh. five minutes. So I thought, let me just try to get back on. Before you go skiing, though, it requires a lot of energy, right? Yes. You want right. your vitamins. Uh -huh. yes. I had my AG1 this morning. How about and that? minerals. Um, we all gave AG1 a try. Most of us liked it. Some of us didn't because I we would it. want to increase our energy and immune system support for our busy lifestyle. Right. We like to take AG1 in the morning before starting the day and makes us feel like we're doing something good to cover all our nutritional bases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And since we travel so often, we use the single serving travel packs. So we never have to miss a day while we're on the road. You can get free monthly delivery to make it even easier. Every scoop has 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food ingredients of the highest quality that is made. Guys, this is nutrition. This is serious stuff. Yeah, you're right. You got to yeah. take it. You're it's right. funny to me because I always read that. Out. I know. Uh -huh. So to see <laughs> Brian read it, yeah. it's funny to me. To watch how uncomfortable Dusty is <laughs> hearing it instead of saying it, it's funny for me. Um, how do you get it? Well, uh, I was in the middle of a sentence, guys. Oh, sorry. Uh, benefits, benefits like gut and mood support. Boosted energy and even healthier looking skin, hair, <laughs> and nails. Less than one gram of naturally occurring sugar per serving. AG1 has been part of millions of mornings since 2010. And if you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash Nate. That's drinkag1.com slash Nate. Check it out. Boom. Yeah, it's fun. Boom. Mixing right. it up. Uh, you want to talk about some Utah sports? I'd love to. Sure. Yeah. I'd love to. Better talk basketball. What do you think is the biggest moment as a guy who grew up there for sports in Utah? Uh, Y'all getting posterized by Michael oh Jordan? Oh, my gosh. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the painful experience bringing it up. No, what is it? What uh, are you when we made the finals the first time, John Stockton made that shot Yeah, against the Houston Rockets. Mm -hmm. That was a big. That was big time. So you went to back to back finals. Mm -hmm. Lost to the Bulls both times. Yeah. My first Maybe NBA game was Utah Jazz. Playing who? Oh yeah, we went together to that one. Oh. Was that your first NBA game? Yeah. Oh okay. Look at this. Look oh, at this man. picture. Isn't that fun? Nice. All Look right. at the bosoms on that guy. Yeah. Alex Valudo. I don't. Know, Nate Bargetsy and Brian Bates. Uh -huh. 
You got yeah. some laminated passes there. Were you getting courtside or was it? <laughs> it was the best seats? I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was sure. crazy. It was against the Cavs. We saw LeBron, yeah, LeBron. up close. Whoa, wow. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a guy I want to see before he retires. Yeah, you think about these generational players. Yep, I'd like to see LeBron in person just to say that I had, you know, because I was too young to have seen Michael Jordan. I was too young to have seen. I've seen Shohei Otani in person. That was like a big one to check off. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see LeBron. I saw Michael Jordan play. You did? Yeah. Wow. In Where? Atlanta. In the, maybe the farthest seats away <laughs> possible. Yeah. But I was a kid. We drove to Atlanta to see the Bulls. But you were in the same room with him. Yeah. Isn't that cool? It was cool. Did you go to college in Utah? Mm-hmm. University of Utah. So your big rival is BYU? Yeah. I didn't really get super into it, but. I'll, I'll Utah's doing pretty yeah. good at football this year, though. Yeah, huh? they are good. Yeah. College football? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not a pro Utah team, huh? No. Just basketball. Yeah, just basketball. Uh, MLS, soccer. yeah. Real Salt Lake. That's the only major team in Utah to win a championship. Oh. Yeah. Isn't that a shame? The it one is. nobody cares about. <laughs> Sorry. This is hurtful. Sorry. No, this, I don't this care. This was a good day, lo- though. We love this, the MLS here. This Sorry. day, when I, this is when I met Brian. And he, he said, hey, fatty, what's up? <laughs> 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 Who's the chubs you know, <laughs> taking along with us? Now, that was a fun weekend. We had to leave, or at least I had to leave at halftime to go do the show. Uh-huh. Yeah, you both left, and I stayed Nate, to watch the game. <laughs> yeah. But I think it was staggered because Nate got to leave a little bit later right. than I did because <laughs> I had to go do some time beforehand. So Utah made it to the finals, though, of championship in basketball, mm-hmm. in college basketball. Oh, yeah, that's right. Andrew Bogut. Uh, yeah. Who else was on that team? Why did y'all keep the name Jazz? Were you aware of the irony? I, I, yeah, I'm well, aware of I it. I know you are aware. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking not to the state of Utah. Not a lot general. of jazz. I know in you Utah? were involved in uh-huh. that. I'm sorry. I, man. I personally think that's why nothing good ever happens to the team because we got some of that like bad juju from, from stealing the name. From stealing the name. Yeah. yeah or like, some voodoo from the Voodoo. New Orleans. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, I've cursed you. Actual curses. Yeah. What would you change it to if you could change the name? Uh, what do you think embodies Utah in the way that jazz embodies the spirit of New Orleans? What embodies it's a Utah? Great question. I was talking to my friend about this, and we decided the rock would be good because we could keep the note, like the music. The Utah. The, you just changed the genre rock. of music. Yeah. Utah. The <laughs> we Utah got rocks. Rock. The Utah Rock. Don't you like money? it? You don't, yeah. <laughs> what about you, mountains? You don't have to hire got, a graphic no, designer. No, he's saying you can keep all the same logos if you just call it the like, Rock and Rolls. Utah Rock and Roll. <laughs> yeah. The, is there a lot of rock and roll in Utah? No, but there's not any jazz either. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what about <laughs> the bees? Metal or bees something. Bees would like be that. good. No, I metal. like just keeping a genre of music. That's uh-huh. fun. Yeah. See, we're all encompassing here. We're just the gospel. Sounds. Maybe gospel. Like <laughs> gospel. That. Utah gospel. Gospel yeah. music. That could be fun. That's true. Bluegrass. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Go for it. Utah polygamist. Go big for it. Go <laughs> yeah. straight up. Like Just lean in. Yeah. 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 We you could have it. 20 people on the court. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some five dudes, 30 women. <laughs> yeah. We got a great zone defense. Uh-huh. I think, yeah. <laughs> Captain of the team, married to all the cheerleaders. Mm-hmm. That's right. What was that TV show a few years ago? It. Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> no, the one about the polygamous family. Oh, little, my s- little people, big family. No, big uh, sister wives. You said it. What was it? Is it Big Love? Big Love. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I wasn't yeah. far off. Oh, Sister Wives is a yeah, Sister show Wives too. one too. Yeah. But Hannah watches it all the time. Is that a reality show? Yeah. This was a scripted show though. Is that like an elimination type show? No, I don't Where, think you're voted no. out of the oh, okay. It's yeah. just what this guy, I think he's married to four women. Oh, okay. And uh yeah, it was I mean And he's just on the run from the from the law. Huh. Yeah, I think yeah. they had to leave. Yeah. I think he's only legally married to one mm-hmm. woman. Mm-hmm. That's what great grandpappy had to do. He had to go to Mexico. Really? Yeah. So I'm oh. technically kind of Mexican. <laughs> oh, how about it? Yeah. Mexican, Italian. Yeah. You're everything, man. Gracias. Good for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Were you at uh, Utah when Urban Meyer was there? Uh, I think you know so. Yeah, 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 yeah. You really Fiesta Bowl? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I was. Are you a big football fan, Alex? No, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm trying to get That's into okay. it. Yeah, I love hoops though. Okay. Yeah. That's okay if you're not. I just you had to. 
you were thinking about whether Urban Meyer was there, <laughs> you would have known that immediately if you're a big football fan. He left for Florida, I know. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, See? Yeah. Just all around great dude. We love him here. Uh-huh. <laughs> I particularly enjoyed his time in, in Jacksonville. That was my favorite yeah. time of, yeah. of mm-hmm. Urban Meyer. I like the last handshake he gave the opposing mm-hmm. uh, coach <laughs> before he quit, that. before yeah. he was fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's king of handshakes to me. Yeah, he didn't even make a whole season, did he? No. 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 And I love it. it by the end, it's like, this ain't going to last. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. <laughs> yeah. Suburban Meyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the picture. Remember the picture of him eating a piece of pizza after he lost? Uh, when he was at Ohio State and he lost, was it the Big Ten Championship or something? And he's just sitting out there, sadly eating a piece of pizza outside. Sad there. Urban Meyer eats leftover pizza at the stadium. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. That's me back at the hotel after bombing all weekend. Yeah. That's exactly what that looks like. Oh, and it's Little Caesars, it looks like, too. Oh, man. Oh, that rule. It makes me like him more. <laughs> He's just a real person, you know? I, you know, I, I really did start to like him after Jacksonville. I, as an Alabama fan, I never uh, enjoyed him mm-hmm. because I – Felt like he was at Florida with Tebow, and then when Tebow was gone, he's like, "Oh, I got health problems." And then he, he was like, "He was like, no, I want to spend time with my family." But then he was a commentator, uh-huh. and then all of a sudden, Ohio State opens up, and he's like, "Oh, I feel better." And yeah. who cares about my family? Yeah. And then, uh, and then he coaches there for a while, and then he goes to Jacksonville and just really bombs it. And <laughs> I, I just, I liked him because of it. You know, he was an assistant at Notre Dame. Was it? And said in his book that Notre Dame was his dream job. So there wow. were like little, there was a little inkling of hope that he would become the Notre Dame head coach. And now I'm glad he he didn't. You know? Yeah, I read something when he went to Florida. Uh, Notre Dame like had like assistants there trying to talk to him, mm-hmm. trying to get him come there. There was a TV helicopter following wow. him around because wow. they thought he was going to Notre Dame. Wow. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you don't think he'll ever coach again? He will maybe at some point. He's old though now. I think he's in his seventies. Is he? I don't think he's that old. No, I, don't oh, think so. I think he's older than you're giving him credit for. I'm gonna say he's in his sixties because I think he was in his. Well, I mean, really, what's the difference between sixty? And 70? <laughs> when you get my age, a lot. He's fifty nine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So he's basically my age now. <laughs> Aaron thinks everyone over yeah. forty. He's one hundred and twenty oh. years old. <laughs> He's 59. I was the Saban's old. Saban's, Saban is in his 70s. Seven, yeah, he's in his 70s. Or 70 okay. at least. Okay, I thought they were the same age. I yeah. guess not, huh? You There's learn a, something. You and day. I are closer together in age than he and Saban. Dang. <laughs> You're getting wow. old. You're getting old, bro. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> that hit me in a weird way. <laughs> so sorry. I felt that. <laughs> uh, BYU did win a national championship in football in 1984. Mm-hmm. Here's how different it is. They won the Holiday Bowl. It was the the only time a national championship get, uh, was won on non New Year's. It was played like December 29th. Oh. So was it a national championship? Well, back then they just voters mm. decided. What? Yeah, there wasn't a national championship. So it game, wasn't right? a sport. It was a game. <laughs> it was yeah, a just chess game. Yeah. Mentally, it was tough. Uh-huh. That's true. It was the last time a national <laughs> champion was determined by a team from a non-Power 5 conference. Uh-huh. <laughs> They've had one Heisman winner. Who Ty, was it? Ty Detmer. Mm. 1990. Beat out Rocket Ishmael. Oh, man. Good for him. Alex, do you remember this? March 8th, 2020. This is the week before COVID shut down the world. Utah mm-hmm. had a 5.7 magnitude earthquake. Oh, yeah. That was a bad week for us. That COVID, the earthquake. We had a tornado the, yeah. the week before. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, so take that. You, you, yeah. you had a rough earthquake. What, a picture frame worse, knocked off? <laughs> <laughs> Bad week, guys. Yeah, we yeah, did. Yeah. You All know, right, we're done. We had, that tornado came through here, yeah. and our power was out when uh-huh. I had to leave and go to Florida mm-hmm. to do comedy. So I put my wife in a hotel because we had no power at the house, and I didn't right. want to just leave her with no power. Yeah. And then I went and did a gig down in Sarasota at, uh, what is that club? McCurdy's. McCurdy's. And then um, I came home, uh, and my wife was wearing a mask and gloves to pick me up from the airport, and I made fun of her. And then we didn't leave for two weeks. We didn't <laughs> yeah. leave the house. <laughs> gloves, even. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I mean, 
Listen, yeah. I abandoned all that stuff pretty quick, but in the beginning, I took oh, it sure. very serious. Yeah, well, yeah. It was in the beginning, wild. I was at the Hermitage Home Depot, only person in there with a mask and gloves on. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks later, I'm like, all right, I'm done. And then all of a sudden, everybody's wearing a mask and I'm walking around without it. You know what I mean? I'm like, let's take it seriously until, until it seems silly <laughs> and then let's get back to work. Two right. weeks was the cutoff. Two weeks to stop the spread. Mm -hmm. They said it, <laughs> I took, said. and I took it. <laughs> I took them at their word. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Utah's the second driest state in the U.S. after Nevada. They have over 300. Alcohol-wise are, are like rain. Yeah, that's what I thought you meant. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, I meant like sunshine. But I bet it's the driest state in the country. Probably. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, the, in that sense. Yeah. Most Diet Coke drink of what, any state? I think so. Has to be, right? Yeah. There's a big trend in Utah where you go to a soda shop and they put syrups in it. We call it Dirty Diet Coke. Oh, yeah. yeah dude. That's how we get after I it. I like you that. Know? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a night in Utah. Yeah, if you can't make it to the Applebee's, uh -huh. I mean, it's yeah. like, get yourself a uh -huh. dirty, dirty that's soda. Right. <laughs> um, it's also the uh, one of the leading states for dinosaurs. The largest raptor ever was found in Utah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Utah raptor. Do you know this? Uh -huh. Yeah. The raptor from Utah. <laughs> Are he, you familiar with it? Yeah. The, he faced religious persecution and he had to go to to Utah to settle down. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were serious. Yeah, like, where is this sorry. going? <laughs> um, yeah. I've seen I've seen it, the the fossils of it. Where's it at? In uh, Vernal, there's a lot of Vernal, Utah. There's a lot of dinosaur fossils. Yeah, yeah. a lot of uh, plaster. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> we got we got religion and dinosaurs. Yeah. This is a hot podcast. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How about this, Ken yeah. Walker Ranch, which I know we've talked about before, but you're into that, right? Man, I started watching a YouTube video on Skinwalker Ranch, and I had to cut it off. I was like, this is freaking me out. Actually, do you know Skinwalker Ranch? I've heard a little bit about it that there's shapeshifters. There's all kinds of things. There. Yeah, I know the big, uh, uh, more like a real estate mogul bought the whole thing, and he's running experiments on it and stuff. It was it freaked yeah. me out. I was like, I gotta, I can't do it. Uh huh. What what else goes on there? Well, well, they this guy was talking about like a giant. I, I watched it. He's talking about a giant wolf. He said he bought the property and that like the there was chains all around the the house and there was uh, bars on the windows and and he at, mutilated cattle at oh. night. They saw a giant wolf out there and then they saw these like like tall, slender, like humanoid looking people mm -hmm. come. And I'm like, nah. I can't do it. Yeah. I'm not, I can't get into the demon world out here. <laughs> <laughs> Just get that off yeah. before it goes through your toes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, They're out there burying dinosaurs is what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Plaster molds uh -huh. out there. Yeah, that's in. right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, bones. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> I, I have listened to the podcast, and I know your theory of how they put, they just take bones and put them together like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, they're like, we found all yeah. these bones. Uh -huh. Yeah, this one's a rib. Uh -huh. <laughs> nah, it's just a little piece, but we know that that uh -huh. was from the rib right yeah. we can tell that this one but do you think they put them in the order and then dig them up like they arrange them to uh, look like a, a dusty's just saying there's a lot of conjecture made when they're re rebuilding these, uh -huh. yeah these things i yeah, can see yeah, that. a lot of educated leaps uh -huh. yeah, that's what i think yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh salt lake city airport is ranked first in on-time departures and has the fewest cancellations among U.S. airports. It is a good airport. I've always had a airport. great time there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> great time there. I always have, yeah. yeah. No wheelchairs allowed. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I'm in support of wheelchairs. Oh, yeah. I, know. I don't want you to. I know. <laughs> it's a weird thing to take a stance on yeah. either way. Yeah. I want everyone to know. I'm I want everyone wheelchair. to have a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. That's about. I never. Did you feel the earthquake? Yeah, I felt it. Uh, I lived next to a train track at the time, so I just kind of thought it was it wasn't too bad. Oh, but okay. Yeah, I'm sorry that the tornado happened. That's okay. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, I, I said it was a rough week and then you guys really jumped down my throat about yeah. that yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you that think up. you know hardship we yeah. had a we had a tornado did you go to the they to, for the record they attacked you though they mm-hmm. said what did a picture frame fell uh-huh. off the wall they yeah. did that to you yeah. mm-hmm. but yeah. in utah the picture frames are bigger because the families are of the bigger. dinosaurs <laughs> oh yeah so you could kill somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the family portraits are larger a picture frame falling could cause an earthquake <laughs> totally yeah that's, that's what, what happens yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. <laughs> They're all panoramic photos. Yeah. yeah. It's tough to get a nail to hold that thing up. Totally. Yeah. 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 That's got to go into the stone. They uh-huh. can't just go into the sheetrock. Tear yeah. up the drywall. <laughs> yeah. 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 You lose your security deposit if <laughs> you hang up family photos in, yeah. in Utah. Yeah, for sure. It's <laughs> very funny. Uh, that's probably a good place to stop. All right. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Everyone go check out Alex Blue on the Nate Land Presents The Showcase. It's on the Nate Land YouTube. There's a lot of funny comics on there. More episodes to come out. Alex had a great set on there. Go check him out. Check out all his other stuff, too. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that was a fun show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'll be at uh, Des Moines, Iowa this weekend at the Funny Bone in West Des Moines, Iowa. It's a great time. Been there many times. Pumped to be there. October 27th, 28th, I'll be at Hyenas Comedy Club with Alex. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That's right. right. How about it? Hyenas uh, 27th in Dallas, 28th in Fort Worth. November 8th, I'll be at Zany's here in Nashville. November 10th and 11th, Comedy Off Broadway in Lexington, Kentucky. How about that? November 3rd and 4th, I'm in Albany, New York at the Albany Funny Bone. Then November 10th and 11th, I'm at the Stress Factory in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Then finally, last thing I'll plug, I'm going up the next weekend, November 16th through the 18th, to Edmonton, Alberta, in Canada. All right. I've been there. Yeah, Rick Bronson's The Comic Strip up there in Edmonton. If you're in Canada, I know it's a big country, but this is the only place I'm coming. You know, I had some great brisket over there. Oh, I'll check it out. Great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. October 26th, I'm uh, opening for Henry Cho in Arlington. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. At the Arlington Music Hall. Beautiful. And I'll be in town. And uh, I weaseled my way onto Brian Bates show. Right. Yeah. Small world. I asked the club owner, "Can I can I do some time?" And he said, "You got to get me Henry Cho tickets." <laughs> and that's really what happened. Uh, no, really? Yeah. <laughs> and then October twenty eighth, I'm in San Antonio with Henry Cho. Well, oh, since awesome. this was a twenty ninth. October 29th. Yeah. Yeah, Since sorry. this was a Utah episode, I'd just like to say again, I'll be at Salt Lake City at yeah. Wise Guys downtown for New Year's. Yeah. It's going to be great shows. Really a lot of fun. I haven't been there in years. So come see me. Don't make the book or regret it. Since this is really a Utah episode, thing. go watch my dry bar special. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hello, folks. It's out now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I was there for the standing ovation incident. I was there for the aftermath. He caused it. Yeah. 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 It was really he great. He was like, sit down. He <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. laughs> yeah. yeah. wasn't that good. He was like, enough. Yeah. Enough. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Thank you all. We love you. Uh, Nate, I was going to say Nate will be back next week, but now he won't. Yeah. So How about that? Nate hosts in Saturday Night Live. That's great. That's pretty Big amazing. Time. When That's we started so this great. podcast, the guy could not sell a ticket. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> it is, I mean, it. Is, I, look, obviously he was big when we started, but it does feel like hosting Saturday Night Live feels like a different echelon. It's of incredible. Of mm-hmm. fame and career success. And, and I uh, can't wait for us amazing. to, I can't wait for us to ride his coattails. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're All having right. a good time. All right. Thanks. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetzi, and my wife, Laura, on the Audio Boom platform. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast. <laughs>